Hello and welcome to session number 35 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hi everyone! Hey! hey yo. We've been on break for a while. First it was Easter, and then it was me, and now we're here. <laughs> so, since it's been a while, we're going to need a very good uh, uh, recap of what happened last time. And we are very prepared for that. Of which our star player, Dennis, has so graciously volunteered <laughs> to do the entirety of requiring no Wait, input we even from anyone what else. else. It, wa it, was, it was supposed to be Austin's turn. And Austin is not here, so we're got we're got we're we'll we'll figure yep. something out. We're yupping it. Ah, uh, it's gonna be it, the, Dennis. You begin. All right. <clears throat> let me tell you, or let me read you out of my little book I prepared. It's called Tales of an Onion. For some reason, it says <laughs> session 34 there. All right. <laughs> they once he made it out of the jungle. No, you can't read my recap. He was the what no, do you mean? It's cheating. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> He's working for that inspiration. <laughs> it's called thiefspiration. <laughs> the only other trick I have is put all of this onto Jason. <laughs> All right, Jason. Okay. The ball is being passed to you. I actually have notes of my own if I can find them. Okay. <laughs> All right. We met a very unusual pale Yvelsi traveling alone without a cart off the road. He was much less amicable than the usual fare, but did have a quite impressive magical wand that he silently offered in trade. Man, is this how I write when I'm taking notes? Why do I write this way? <laughs> He had gem-studded box, which were painted with stripes somewhat reminiscent of Pip's rock. You use the word somewhat reminiscent in notes? <laughs> Apparently that's my stream of conscious. I don't I know. I love it. That's... I'm, I'm weird. Right. Very deep. Sorry. Well writ? What? <laughs> that's, <clears throat> that's what I have here. Uh, I forgot the music. So, what happened with... How did we get the... The the thing. How did we get the wand? Yeah, Matt. How did we get the wand? The what did you give away? Frustrated himself and then threatened to offer the seed of the world for <laughs> it, and then no one else was a fan of it. And then the guy tried to take the wand back and offer something that was still cool but not the thing. And the professor <laughs> threw a tiny little fit until the DM said, "No, I'll just let them have this one." And then I gave him a. Uh, my soul, also called the Wand of Smiles. And our Mask of the Observer. Uh, yeah, but the Mask the Wand of Smiles was the big one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never actually got to successfully use it. And a diamond. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. and my 50 gold diamond. Uh, the, literally, it the, like, took the clothes off my back, as it were. It took the diamond off my staff. <laughs> or just took the whole staff, however you want to rule it. And now you have the wand. But now I have this. Um, and and we still have the seed, so if we all <laughs> came out in, uh, on top. Uh, what else happened that session, Sid? Uh, so the next day, uh, one of the couriers from the World Point arrived and uh, brought Pip his uh, World Point Park card again, and then Talix got the. Uh, as in dictionary from Boomin. Mm -hmm. And Potvex got a bunch of junk mail, you know, because. <laughs> hey, let's not brush over this. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is the most important part of the mail. <laughs> All of the coupons. And I believe the following day, we finally got to Urka and saw that part for the first time on the peninsula. Uh, and everything was really organized, like the whole city structure was very square and, you know, no, no buildings were put where they shouldn't be. Uh, there was a big statue of a large gnome in military armor standing in the plaza. And what uh, happened and the uh, in the colony, Dennis? This is your time to redeem yourself. 
What do you mean, redeem myself? For Just trying to read my summary. <clears throat> I blame Austin. Our summary. I, we all <laughs> we blame Austin. Sudden communism. <laughs> Either way, if I remember correctly, we do split up, and <coughs> Pip and Bardas are going to the uh, toy store, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of the party has been going shopping and getting it in. We did do the logistics uh, on how many, uh, how much a certain amount of marbles cost, and we did find that he could just buy the whole store. Uh, and then we were basically on the thing <laughs> of like him trying to date this guy's daughter, who was also <laughs> the maker of the toys, and then like a wife. I think, and then I... just take over his entire store. <laughs> I'm not sure Austin actually said any of that. I think all of this was actually in character. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, also, we saw a statue. Saying all that. <clears throat> we saw a statue <laughs> called the Wild Tamer. It seemed like a character that might come up later. We don't know anything else about it, though. Yeah, and if I keep looking at my notes, apparently there's a group of gnomes coming that just marched into town. And they oh. were led by a man whose statue stands right in the middle of the colony. Oh, wait, oh, is that happening? I kind of missed that. Ah, uh, that is now oh, happening. Oh, so that, that, that's the guy. <laughs> okay. I guess it is coming up right away. <laughs> Sorry, I totally forgot about that part. Did I redeem uh, myself? Uh, yes, everyone has redeemed nice. themselves. So here's how it's gonna. Uh, here's how this is gonna work, uh, right? Where did my insp there it is? Uh, so I, I will at some point uh, during uh, the session. <laughs> I will throw an inspiration die in the middle of the table, and whoever gets it first uh, uh, keeps it. Oh. <laughs> It's a. It's going to be a free for all. First come, first serve. Here we go. Let's see, and it's going to be at some point in the session, just complete random, huh? Yeah, yeah. Are I you also, sure you're going to remember? I yes. <laughs> okay. She's written it down in her DM notes. There's a specific scene where she's going to throw it. I have a, a little. Scene. I have a little post-it on my screen. Right after a character that we love dies. <laughs> How did you see my notes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sad. Ah, give me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Can't wait to see everyone's minds like <clears throat> frantically scanning over the board area. <laughs> the entire <laughs> session. <laughs> or is that just me? That's, the... I already do that. So. <laughs> uh. I, I can see that sometimes, especially with Dennis, when like one of your cursors is just going in a circle around a map. <laughs> it keeps your, your game. Or like up, forward fresh. and back and forward and you mean back. This? Yes! <laughs> you are always doing that! <laughs> I mean it was probably one of the first two fashions where you, sessions where you look back and we're like, man Dennis, you are Really nervous around the table. <laughs> Dennis, why is your mouse movement so smooth? Because I don't need Do a mouse. He's, he's just no he's just move he's just moving his camera around. Yeah, I'm just using W S. Like right and left, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, what on earth? <laughs> you using a trackball mouse? That's kinda cool. Alright, we're getting distracted. Um yep. so the it's party like is currently split. Um, Tekka and Fortis right now are like at the entrance of the toy store watching as Pip and his uh, new gnome friend Mina are like on the way out. Um, and with, with everyone sees this happening, this group of gnomes coming in from uh, this side of the colony. Oh wow, you can barely see my pencil. Uh, over here. <laughs> uh, and passing pretty much in front of the toy store. And then eventually the rest of the, of the party see into this too as uh, this group arrives in the middle of the colony. And uh, uh, the man leading them is beginning to approach the four of you. And the gnome that's coming your way feels uh, 
grander than his stature. Maybe it's because of the quietness that follows him, the way that everyone else around interrupted what they were doing as he approached, and you can see uh, in some of the rise this spark as they watch him walk by. It almost feels like a god that just manifested himself in the colony. His salt and pepper hair has a deep blue shine to it, but he keeps it so short that he almost missed it. It's more noticeable in his beard and mustache, kept neat and well-groomed. You can see as he comes closer, multiple scars run across his skin. One in particular that goes from his forehead over his, over his right eye and down his cheek. His attire is not too unlike that of the other soldiers. His armor is light, shiny, practical. It almost looks weightless, but it's a little more decorated than the others. There's gold and silver used for the clasps and, and buckles. And as he approaches, you can see the tip of his rifle poking up from behind one of his shoulders. And there's this sense of, of trepidation and mounting anxiety. He makes eye contact with each of you and then he stops in front of Pontifex and holds out a hand. He says... Your service to Gnomekind is recognized and appreciated, and shall now be rewarded. Uh, while this individual was approaching, the professor's hand was on his wand, <laughs> ready to quick draw. <laughs> uh, so he's like a little flabbergast. Eh. Eh, you're welcome? Do you shake his hand? Uh... Can I, like, get a read on this guy? Am I being messed with? Uh, roll an inside check. Well, <laughs> like, my hand gonna explode? <laughs> he, like, got one of those little buzzers, but with, like, dynamite in his palm. Uh, you are not being messed with. But you did, you did see, you do see, like, for a moment, his, um, his focus is away from your eyes and uh, go somewhere behind you where the uh, your floating disc is still following closely and the remains of the one who stares <laughs> are still piled on it. Uh, oh, ah, yes, uh, of course, uh, absolutely. Me and my companions here, and he'll, he'll take the, the gnome's hand in his and give like a firm froggy handshake. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I had nearly forgotten from all of the wear of battle and such. And then he lets go of your hand. And he begins sure. to walk off. The rest yeah. of uh, the group behind him begins to follow, and uh, uh, this man uh, gestures at one of them in particular, who uh, breaks off from the group and approaches you. And uh, this is not a gnome. Uh, this is an elf. And he is... Uh, for, for a moment, he is not particularly taller than the gnomes that he was with, but it's mainly because of how hunched over he is. Um, with elves, uh, usually being able to... Uh, it's, it's difficult to tell their age. Um, uh, an elf could easily be 30 years old or 300, and there would be no difference whatsoever, but this, this man is barely more than a walking corpse barely holding himself together, pulling himself forward um, uh, by leaning heavily on a cane. And as he, uh, he approaches, he pulls back his long hair and he glances briefly at all of you and he holds out uh, a pouch and you can hear uh, the coins uh, inside of it. Oh. The stories you could tell if you only had the time, eh? I'll, I'll, I'll take the money from his... Oh, okay. Or from the voucher, I guess I'll take the bag. He... He... He does this little... little um... Scoff at this. Um... And you can tell that he doesn't seem to think that uh, he has any time to spare for that kind of stuff. Uh, but then as he, as he reaches to his side and he takes out another coin pouch. And he points at the floating disc uh, and uh, uh, just very uh, matter-of-factly, very business-like, he says, There's more money that you can have 
if you can get that body in return. What, what's the group read like? Anyone opposed to what? it? Okay, what was our plan with this thing? I think it was to just bring it back here to do something with it rather than just leaving it out there. I know it's the professor didn't have anything kinda... specific because it doesn't have the it doesn't have the initials on it, does it? The OTH? Mm -hmm. It does no. not. We checked. Yeah. Talos is just gonna shrug. It's money. Sure. Yeah. If uh, uh, we just didn't want to leave it out there, so. Uh, sure. Uh, if you like, I can uh, lead this wherever you're going. Uh, this thing kind of goes where I go, but... It is a little heavy. Do I look like the kind of person who does any sort of manual labor? I'll just get someone uh, to pick it up. Well, that is what I mean. I am offering the... That will handle just... it. Oh, okay. Sure. I guess I'll take the other sack of money and I will just... Stop concentrating on it and just. <laughs> on the ground. Is there a floating um, wall somewhere? Sorry, I just saw like the thing on Discord. Yeah, it's like someone's in the back here. What? Yeah, they're missing for me as well. Oh, I thought that was on purpose. I thought like the town is battle damage or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, why? They're to check orbit. Okay, here. It's this wall. Yeah, and this wall. I think it's a and couple like, sections in that person. They're like a hundred meters in the air. That's really weird. That's like I at mean, the top of the... It's correct for me. They're in the clouds. A section here, and a section here. Yeah, one of them. Now. One of them got fixed. Sorry, I didn't realize that was two segments. Yeah. Yep. There's a, one is this, more. Is this yeah. fixing it? It yeah. is. Boom, all fixed. Huh. All right. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's in the correct place for me, but it basically refreshed its position. Uh, yeah. Huh, interesting. Okay, all right. Uh, Pontifex, you now have two bags of money. Um, and uh, the, uh, the the old elf uh, gestures. A few gnomes come over and begin to just pick up the remains of the one who stares very unceremoniously putting them all together in these in in these separate like crates and uh you watch as what is left of uh, this machine that nearly took your lives uh is taken away uh, would you mind me asking what you intend to do with it out of this curiosity yes i do mind are you are you a half gnome by chance <laughs> <laughs> Just side tangent, totally unrelated. <laughs> uh, he, he, <laughs> he rolls his eyes <laughs> uh, and then goes back to like observing as the, as, uh, the, uh, the pieces of metal are collected and uh, uh, he says, look, you got your money. That's... Um, excuse me, sir, if I may ask... Uh, under whose employee are you? Do you work for the gnomes here locally? I work for the Arch Commandant. It's a blast, really. Hmm. Sounds like it. So he has an interest in this. Possibly to study its uh, composition? Ooh, ah. Uh, how do I put this? He, the arch, all the arch commandant really cared about was that this thing was destroyed. And now we can proceed with the rest of our plans as uh, uh, we've been trying to this whole time. Uh, as for the, for how this thing was actually made, well, that's that's not really the arch commandant's uh, uh, interest. It's more. He briefly glances at each of you as he interrupts his sentence, and he raises an eyebrow, and... 
He seems to be really thinking about how, like, how to word this, uh, as if he's trying to simplify the concept for you. Um, until he finally shrugs and says, Well, the technology of the locals uh, can be of interest to some of us. Let's just put it that way. Is it the trains? You want to know more of the trains? They're pretty neat. Is it true that they run off of explosions? Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Uh, pretty neat. Huh? I, said, I only said it once, but the, uh, yeah, the explosions don't, part. Perhaps don't, don't say pretty neat to a gnome. They take quite a lot of pride. Oh, on, no, I know. I had the train. bullet wound to, to, to prove it. No, you've been shot. Uh, of course. Huh? You haven't? Welcome to the club. Oh, yes, haven't I, I had assumed. You seem like you have spent any amount of time here, therefore I assume you have been shot at. <laughs> <laughs> they are good shots. <laughs> you learn quickly what to say yep. and what not to say in their presence. Took me once. <laughs> hmm. Is he... Is this individual still have that kind of aloof shittiness to them, or am I starting to break through? <laughs> um, at the very least, you got him talking, which seems to be more than what he was originally willing to do. By now, the crates have been filled up, uh, and the gnomes are beginning to disperse and uh, take away... Um, the remains of the one who stares, and that his elf looks like he's uh, pretty much ready to follow them. He just looks back at you and like slams a, a hand on one of his legs and says, Well, it has been a... It's been a change in the usual. Indeed it has, Mr. Um... You did not give your name yet. Elyris. Hey, Mr. Elyris, I am Pontifex Vasdalus Olenach. Yeah, and right, these right, are I know. my great. Wait, do you know? My name precedes me. Ooh. For the first time, do you read much? Uh... <laughs> this is new. <clears throat> Actually, no, what did you roll earlier? 21, I see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as uh, uh, the elf just sort of like avoids the question and just says good day and begins to walk off. But like you get this this feeling like that, that uh, you you've been a professor for for a long time, you've been a teacher for a long time, and you can kind of get a feel for like people who um have uh, an interest in um in studies in general i guess i guess you could say you, you can tell when somebody is a nerd and uh, this this elf is giving you that kind of vibes even if he's kind of avoiding mentioning it oh uh, mr Alaris, uh, one thing before you leave uh, please take down my world point information uh, I was not kidding when I said uh, the stories you could tell with the time. Perhaps when you have a moment, we could, we could write back and I forth a bit. Don't have a moment. I never have a moment. And they have a way of making themselves apparent, and I have all these things I wish to discuss with someone as aged as myself. These young ones don't understand. You see. These whippersnappers don't know what we hadn't been through. I ain't met another old fogey in a minute. He glances briefly at Talix and Brooke and Casimir. Just awkwardly wave. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend started cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> um... And he, like, takes a step back towards you and he hands you a piece of paper. Pontifex. Uh, oh. That is oh, his people. world point uh, information uh, that he had already written down and ready to go. His full name <laughs> is Ilaris uh, Kankinal, spelled like this. 
Um, with his address being in Urca, uh, and you have like the, the information of his card, so you, if you want to if you want to write on him uh, to him, um, and as he hands it like the piece of paper and you unfold it to, to look at it, he says, "There's always work for people like you in Urca. Don't contact me to waste my time." I like to believe that uh, none of the words I use are a waste of time. I seem to have gotten your world point, so I think that you uh, feel the same. Anyways, you are a busy man, you were saying. He's walking uh, off. Good day to you. Yes, I uh, bye! <laughs> Thanks for the money! <laughs> hey guys, we got a lot of money, I think. Always good. <clears throat> How much is it? Um, the reward for defeating the one who stares is 500 gold. Each. <gasps> Total. <laughs> the money for uh, buying the body off of your hands is an extra 200. Fuck. Yeesh. So that's 100, 140 each. Oh, what about the, what about Casimir? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. He's a phantom. He must be paid for his work. So that's if we're being fair, 112.5 each. Good. I'm willing to split evenly with Casimir. Sure. Wait, no, that's wrong. 116 point. Yeah, it's 101 sixth. So that'd be the 16 and then six repeating. Yeah. You know, just to make the math easy, I'll take the loader's fee. <laughs> um, we can round. Casimir accepts his uh, uh, cut of the money um, and thanks you and offers to buy you dinner tonight. Ooh. That's what I wanted to hear. That is my guy. <laughs> That's my guy. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just really tired of eating rations. Yeah, um, as for the other half of the group, uh, Tech, after you after you witness this, this group of gnomes walking off, um, the the gnome that Pepe has just befriended, Mina, uh, is gently tugging him by one hand. Uh, you've heard that she was going to show him uh, the the train. Uh, in the colony, and uh, um, they only leave once her mom shows up, uh, and uh, her, her mother is a, a dwarf. Um, when, and she comes over and takes Mina's other hand, uh, and as they're beginning to all walk off together, Mina stops and, and, and looks at you, Tekka, and uh, um, she lets go of Pip's hand to point at you and says, I want to talk to you later. Then we will talk. Okay. And she takes Pip's hand, and the three of them are off. Pip is going to be over here. <laughs> um. Teka, anything else you'd like to get done at the at the toy store? Uh. I know there's a thing you're buying there, uh, but and, and like we've we've settled that already. Did I give you a price? Y yes, yes, you did. Okay. Uh, uh, since this was done off camera, I will, I'll just say that uh, Tech and the body uh, buying a wind-up frog toy and a toy catapult from the toy store. Toy catapult. Mm-hmm. Fortress has gotten a couple of toys as well. Uh, he spent some time uh, trying to decide what kind of things uh, uh, his brother would like. And uh, uh, he has his own little his own little box uh, that he has filled up with things. And he, he, he seems satisfied and he slides like, all of it into his backpack. Fortis, do you not want to join Pip to see this 
invention? Uh, I... I don't know. I am a little curious, sure, but I, I can't really say that... Um, I'm just... I don't know. Take a uh, roll a side check, please. Okay. <laughs> Did not expect this to be a, such a difficult question. <laughs> oh, is Casimir okay? <laughs> All right. Um, Fortis has looked nervous ever since uh, um, you guys have stepped into the colony. And there yeah, is, uh, um, he didn't particularly seem to, uh, once, once the situation back in Vera was resolved and you guys returned the rifle, um, he, his opinion on him seemed to have shifted a little bit, um, he's, he, he, he and, um, he seems to be a lot more cautious around them, uh, but, that, like, as of, now, as of today, uh, every little thing he does, he looks really scared. Like at any moment something bad might happen. And it, it seems like he's more comfortable with the idea of being with you rather than being uh, um, with uh, uh, only with, with Pip. Uh, mm. Maybe he feels just safer next to you. Yeah. Hmm. Stay close, Fortis. We'll leave Pip V. Join the others. <laughs> uh, Jason got the inspiration die. Oh, damn. Very nice. I was at the top of the table <laughs> in the room when that happened. Yeah, I was concerned with uh, the Pip who was prone on the railroad tracks. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I was a little worried that maybe this date's going poorly. <laughs> it's become like a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> wrapped up in ropes on the railroad tracks. That's um, horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. We gotta save him. Please untie me. I'll give you all my marbles. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep them. Oh, just put <laughs> marbles on the tracks. <laughs> the rail the like train. <laughs> just ball bearing the train. <laughs> That's why he needs 5,000 of them. <laughs> His whole life is a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we went so off track. I completely forgot what Tekka said. Uh, off track. Yeah, ah. <laughs> back. well done, well done. Yeah, it was essentially, yeah, stay close, we'll go back to this plaza and meet the others. Okay, yeah. Um, he, he, he nods. Uh, you guys can meet up in a plaza. Party comes back together, Pip is missing. <sighs> we are back. Pip is investigating a train. Hmm. Has oh. met a new friend. Is investigating a train without me? He doesn't need a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> there was a one of a lifetime opportunity. Oh, I guess that makes it okay. Can't see what have train. you found? Uh, lots of money. Here you go. <laughs> uh, you get 116 gold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you that this was lying. <laughs> oh, no, it was a... Uh, you know, there's a distinct lack of the uh, death machine. Uh, the locals seem to have uh, rewarded us for killing it and then also paid for the corpse and whatnot. Uh, we had no use for it and I like the cut of the jib of the men who wanted it, so. They uh, paid us a hefty amount of money, this is your cut. Wasn't very forthcoming with uh, why they wanted it though. Eh. As he said, he did not have the time. 
It is not for us to know. He also said he had plans. Like the gnomes had plans. I, I mean, don't we all? What's the worst that can happen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what mm. is the worst that could happen? Mm. Yeah, besides uh, uh, them making an army of them and then uh, getting revenge on all of the plural and eastern races for the oppression during the wars and the whole landscape will go up in flames. Uh. Hmm. But, but, Fortis is looking that, more and more nervous <laughs> <laughs> with every word you say. Would maybe use an army of them to have an iron grasp over the entirety of Ladaria. All of the towns and villages would be under the new gnome regime. You want to go see the train? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, okay. Uh... Let's go. I don't think we really have anything else to do here, do we? Might as well go meet up with Pip. Uh, actually, Cass, should we potentially let the others, other phantoms, if there are any here, know that it's oh. done? Oh, Brooke, I already am. Oh. Yeah. Huh. yeah, yeah, it's oh. all done. Oh, those were the people you were talking. Well, uh, most of them actually were in there, uh, aren't here in the colony. It looks like they're already somewhere in the jungle, so uh, we'll get it all sorted out. All right, let's go to the train. Okay. Um. Uh, right. You are, uh, you are, uh, pointed uh, to the southern part of the colony, and, uh, um, you, you leave its walls, and, uh, it's easy enough, uh, um, to see this construction. Uh, it feels like, uh, to, to some of you, it feels like an enormous snake just lying down and crossing the land from uh, from west to east as far as your eyes can see. It's such a strange uh, sight for you uh, to see these, this railway. Um, you've Taken all at once, it's like the biggest construction that any of you have ever seen. Uh, but it's also currently just empty, just this set of metal and wood that stretches as far as you can see. Uh, on its own, it's, while big, uh, somewhat unimpressive. Uh, you, you see Pip and uh, Min a bit off in the distance just running around. Uh, she is chasing him around with uh, uh, what appears to be a toy gun. Uh, oh yeah, you don't know who Mina is, but you see him playing with like an, an old uh, uh, child. Appears to be a toy gun? With gnomes? Or is it, it a toy gun? It could be real. Is it, is it made <laughs> out of wood or...? Aren't no. normal guns made out of wood? It's, it's made of metal. Oh, the barrel. Okay, that's... Uh, Pep, <laughs> why, why don't we play a different game? I'm gonna go over and try to intervene. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you break up the two ch children playing uh, the... And on the wand again. <laughs> the, the gnome seems <laughs> like she has her cheeks uh, puffed out and she seems annoyed at the adult. Uh, showing up to ruin their fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, while Talix is uh, uh, dealing with, with the kids, uh, um, you see a... Um, the, the rest of you uh, actually hear a, a familiar voice uh, calling out. Hey guys! Uh, you made it! And uh, Gringina is here. 
uh, waving at you from uh, from where the the walls of the colony uh, are, and approaching your group. Uh, That's the the gnome. The gnome you girl. teamed up the... with back in Simlielon yeah. uh, when you saved the that colony from uh, eternal sleep and death. Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on, we all I remember wasn't her, didn't you? That was there for her. So. Said what's her name, Red? Yes. Gringina. Yeah. Oh. She was like, I remember she said something about like being brought back. Yeah, yeah. she was part she of the wolf. Died. And she had some warlocky vibes. Okay, I remember her. Oh, she's too big. She shot Eldritch Blasts out of her gun. As you do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Self? Yeah, somewhat. Alright, close enough. Small. Small? <laughs> Very small. Ah, uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you as well. You uh, are you guys busy? Oh, I think we were just on our way out of town, but our immediate work is done. How have you been keeping? Oh, uh, you know, I came back here and I gave my version of the events that transpired in Simlielon and things are fine and now I'm just standing around, doing nothing. No imminent plans for war? What? Why? What have you heard? Inside check. I heard everything. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard everything. Just spill it. After just giving the speech about raising an army of these and the whole <laughs> Eastern Plurian races going down with a firestorm and getting an iron hold on Ladaria, I can have police inside check that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You can all inside check places. that. Oh, nice. All, right. all of us? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm yeah, doing yeah, it. You. you said it too late. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can't roll. <laughs> <laughs> um okay to to pontifex and to brook uh, um the, the there's like a moment where where the the corner of her mouth kind of lifts up a little bit she seems to I be joking the pontifex and uh what since pontifex and Brooke. Hi. no what? no i i haven't rolled so oh oh it. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I guess no reason to <laughs> distrust her right now. So. Okay, okay. Uh, Pontifex and Brooke can tell that she is joking, but Talix is a little worried that this is, there is something brewing. The gnomes are up to something. Oh. They're always up to something. <laughs> is the joke just they cover a story? <laughs> Roll for paranoia. It's a game of Call of Cthulhu now. It's like you're back in the jungle now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you gave a report of the business in Simlielon here, it seems like we might be getting a bit of a reputation after dumping off that body recently. Uh, I followed you until the mention of a body? Uh, there was some kind of uh, evil machination thing in control of the woods. Uh, we dealt with it and oh, brought the, machine. the corpse here. You yes. killed the machine? Uh, the machine yeah, from the, the jungle. one who stares, it was called, yes, sir. It has a name? Huh. Uh, wow, okay, that's crazy. You guys are impressive. Yeah, really? Uh, well, that's cool. I guess that means that uh, we can build a railway to the north th then. That's awesome. That people wait, are going to be happy wait, about wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. You're, on, you're building through the jungle? Well, yeah. I mean, where aren't we building? Mm. Wait, is that what they want the body for? To make railroads? It, it doesn't run off of explosions, it runs off of fear? Okay, <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? I think probably that's what the elf meant about their plans going into motion now. But, uh, you're gonna have a different problem. That the jungle belongs to the Aitarva. They won't allow you to build a railroad through it. 
Huh. And there is one particular Atarava uh, wandering one. Is, was he Atarava or your no, Belsi? Oh, are, are, are they friends? Does it matter? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, well, there's a one like a Belsi that I recommend you don't mess with. Okay. You guys yeah, are, like, a dumping a lot of information on me right now. Okay. No, no, no. But that's, yeah. that's beside the point. They're, they're gonna go at war if you're trying to build through the jungle. Why not just Why? hold around it? Uh, because it takes way longer? Then building through a jungle? <laughs> It'll take a lot longer. I can only imagine. Getting it away. Nah, it's just a matter of distance, you know? Like, can you imagine con like, connecting Simlielon and Buthelera together? Like, it's going to be so much faster to to trade and to... You, you know how a railway works? Like, it's, it's good stuff. To, it's like building roads. You generally don't do that through a dense jungle. It's more of a case of if you the go Palix around, they, they're are likely from... no problems. Gnomes if are from you go a... through, you might fight the thing that we are scared of. That, that we come... Stasil is a country that's all forest. We we know how to do this. But, uh, I tell you what, okay, you guys seem to be very interested in, in, in gnomish engineering for some reason. Uh, and I have something to like that I need to chat with you guys about. So how about I what time is it? How about I buy you dinner? Oh look at Cass. <laughs> Casimir nods and says, and says, Oh yeah, that, that would be great. Hi, I'm Casimir, by the way. <laughs> Good to meet you. Well, you got lucky there, huh? I feel like there's a level of and self destructiveness going on here. <laughs> well, oh, dinner wow, it is. Wow, you guys are super impressive. You killed the thing. Oh, this one thing you keep mentioning that gives you the heebie jeebies? No big deal. We want to build a train. <laughs> um, Whatever, they will find out. It's at this point uh, uh, that you begin to hear this noise. This, uh, it's far away at first, but as it comes closer, it becomes louder and louder. And to most of you, I've never heard it before. It almost sounds like the roaring of a giant beast. Uh, Tekka, you're just instinctively reaching for your staff and stepping away. Um, and you, when you watch as this massive construction of metal uh, just slides across the, these rails um, and as it comes to a stop almost exactly in front of you uh, you see a train for, for some of you for the first time um, Pape and Mina take off again to go check it out from a really up close um, the Pontifex goes with them yeah, sure. Uh, I keep trying to get Pip's cart around in the picture. <laughs> yeah, but you, you can go with. Um, this is this is pretty recent uh, uh, technology, Pontifex. Uh, for for uh, for how long you've been around? For how long gnomes have been around? Uh, this is stuff that has been come up with uh, in the last thirty years or so. Uh, A new model. <laughs> There were there were no train in fifty years. There were no, there was no train uh, b before then, uh, and the oh. this is where the gnomish engineering really shines. You so you spent some time living uh, among elves, and uh, and that's when you got glimpses into like the kind of machines that gnomes can build. Uh, but this is uh, uh, their modern masterpiece. It's so difficult to comprehend just how heavy this thing is and now we could this the single locomotive could pull all of these train carts uh, alongside this, this system of rails uh, and just thinking of how far the rails go and the amount of materials that it took to 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 build it across uh, across this section of the peninsula and the amount of energy that it takes for it to move is uh, is insane and to you in particular pontifex the the um, the thing that you're most curious about is exactly what the the energy what exactly is capable of moving su such a heavy load at once and uh, you don't really know. It's a secret that the uh, the gnomes keep uh, uh, 
very uh, protected. We did establish that like a long a way back when Pontifex was first leaving uh, the I forget what they're called the not the the Eastern countries the not Sylvan speakers. Um, the Jade that's Council just country clear enough. <laughs> he left there to go west to get to Simlela, and he went through Stasil, and that he went on a train. Like he used a train to get through some of that, and that's where that's where he formed his his whole conclusion that it's powered by explosions and whatever. The most powerful magic of fireball. I hmm. believe you are right. Yeah. You're right. That's true. Yeah, he's been on a train. Uh, you he, are he right. Loved them ever I, since. I forgot you've been on a train. That's true. Uh, uh, Talos says as well, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys are right. I forgot about that. But he doesn't. Talos doesn't know how they I built appreciate the description worked. all the more, though. <laughs> Well, I've just contradicted myself. Trains. Yeah, uh, and I think it was about 50 years when, when I crossed over. Yeah, I was actually just checking your timeline uh, to make sure. You need to check his Wikipedia. His I dedicated Have Wikipedia. you guys seen my time? It's <laughs> intense. <laughs> it is intense. It is Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, that was 50 years ago. It was 48 yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah, the technology is slightly less uh, new than I was saying and I didn't add 20 years to that Talos uh, is going to turn to Gurnjina where where are these machines built what the, the, the train yeah it's so much metal so much craftsmanship um you really want to know? Just out of curiosity? Right, I figured it's curiosity, but the thing is that like, you can't actually go see it. So like if I tell you, here? but then you, can, you can't go see it, then it's going to be like, oh, but I want to go see it because I'm curious. It's here on the peninsula. It's, it's, we have some that are made in Plurna, and yes, we have a place here uh, on the peninsula. But I can't know where it is. Well, you can know, you just can't see it. Oh. Well, where is it? Um, Grangina taps a foot on the ground and says, ah, it's below here. Whoa. Okay. That's not just me, right? Like, everyone else really wants to see this. <laughs> Does everyone know it's below here? For the list in... Oh, well, that, uh, I don't know if it's like a, a well-known fact outside of my people. We know. We got these 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 buildings that we just carve into the ground and like we, we do all of our like heavy production there. Wait, but what about things like smoke and you know, fresh air and right, water. Right. How do you? Let, 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 let me tell. Let me tell you this. I have, was never an engineer. I am a soldier. I fight things. That's all I know. So the details, I don't know them. I can just tell they're underground. You guys want a dinner, or do you want to like eat here in front of the, tr the train? Uh, I, while this conversation was taking place, uh. uh there have been some gnomes removing crates from the train, uh, from from the, uh, the the wagons in the back, and bringing them into the colony. Are they open crates, or are no. they like? Oh. They're like of all sizes. It seems like a, it's it's an assortment of car uh, there, like, of cargo. Is there a big label on the side that says war stuff? <laughs> Top secret, do not open. <laughs> I roll a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, but yeah, as far as eating, uh, is everyone else okay with that? 14. Uh, you never have a chance to like get too close to read the labels, but some you, you, you do see that some crates are labeled and some are... Um, I can't actually read Sylvan or Gnomish. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
if I'm so, there, I can read Sylvan. But I don't know if I'm off with Pip and the girl still. Um. Well, you would be, but it's the same thing. Like you're never allowed too close to actually like, glance at the labels. Hmm. Okay. There is a heavy uh, military presence around this, this locomotive, like like most of the colony, um, and like all it takes is just them like glancing at you. You know, like there's there's this point that you're not supposed to cross. Oh, it's it. What's your favorite restaurant? Uh, I could take you to the to the owl bears then. Is that what you recommend? Mm hmm. Well, I have to go to the owl bears then. Do, do, do. I don't remember where the tavern is. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me look at the map. Uh, it's not this one. But it's... Before, <laughs> yes? before we go, uh, Tekka's been kind of been, like his eyes are been, have been locked on this locomotive <laughs> while this conversation has been taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, and as, as we decide to leave, he says... We'll take bull by their horns as we take child by their word. In indeed. Did you say that at the train or into the group? Like, did you look, say that looking, you looking at the train? Oh. Ah, uh, Grangina <clears throat> leans towards Brook and says. What did he just say? Well, uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, me neither. But not. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I get mean, a cringy nod. Well. <laughs> okay. Da da da! The owl bear is done. Um, what the... time is it? Is it noon or is it evening? It's beginning to, to be evening, late afternoon. Uh, the the place that uh, uh, Grangina has decided to take you to is uh, um, a little bit more, more rowdy than the places you've stayed at so far. Um, she seems perfectly at ease here um, and she seems to know a lot of the people uh, in these places here waving and fist bumping a few people um, and getting this, this large table in one corner and the, the, the lighting uh, leaves something to be desired and kind of makes the place look a little bit uh, uh, creepier than it really uh, needs to be um, and, and she and she in particular she chose this one spot that is very isolated um, which means you're in a darker corner, but also means that there is a bit more distance between you and the rest of the people in here, which uh, you, you might appreciate. Um... My browser just crashed. <laughs> oh no! I've been having browser issues lately too, like weirdly. <clears throat> Do you also have like 500 tabs open? Yes, but so oh, what? No. Oh, I meant I, I, I was talking to. <laughs> I was talking no. to Matt. <laughs> no, I, I have, like maybe like six at peak usage. Why are you feeling so intense for just uh, <laughs> I I am definitely very sensitive about this. <laughs> about your tap. Okay. <coughs> um Do 
Grangina seems a little tense. Uh, she mentioned that she has something to discuss with you guys, but then she do, she uh, actually um, doesn't even bring it up for a while. Uh, you guys all order your food uh, and, and get your drinks, and uh, uh, Casimir is like getting uh, more drinks than he really should. Um, Forto seems a little uncomfortable in this place. Uh, his uh, uh, his anxiety isn't getting any better. Um, uh, e eventually, Grinjin is going to to lean towards uh, to, uh, that Talix who happens to be sitting to her to her left, and she says, "So, um, your 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 two friends here that I don't know are they like pretty good and trustworthy?" Uh. I believe so, though uh, we even don't tell them everything. Uh, what sort of what what sort of issue are we talking about here? Well, it's just I've got I've got like uh, a message to deliver, and it's kind of meant for like you guys. A message from who? Maybe we can talk about it if we like we can get to be on our own? Without them? Um. Maybe later? I mean, I, I don't even know if that boy can drink. So, like, you know, we can just stay uh, as adults around the table and then, um. Find a reason for for the halfling to to be off. I, I'm not sure. Uh, Brooke, help. <laughs> I hear that. Uh, Talix will try visibly, to get Brooke's attention. <laughs> Visibly, the three of them are like having a little private conversation. Uh, Casimir doesn't seem to care at all. Uh, he's just happy he got to he got free booze today. I mean, oh and Gina, if you want me to tell him to leave, I can tell him, and he can probably take the kid with him as well. But when it comes to me, and I speak for myself, I think he is trustworthy enough to hear the information. But I'll leave that decision up to the group, he will understand. He's a phantom, isn't he? Yep. Okay. Well, it's... Probably fine, you guys have like this... this... Code of Honor thing. Yeah, I should be fine. Ah, uh, so later, after we, we get the boy off. Okay, I can buy you guys a room? For the night, maybe we can send him away in a way? Just send him to sleep? Hmm. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. So you guys have a somewhat uh, just normal dinner, making small talk. You tell... Uh, uh, Grinchin asks a little bit about, like, your... Uh, the way you supposedly took down this, this machine that you guys have uh, have a name for. Uh, so if you're... If you're if you're okay with it, you can tell her, like, the things that happen in the jungle. I kind of want to see Cass <laughs> rankedly explain. <laughs> uh, if you let Casimir take, take the lead, like, the further into the evening we go, the more outlandish his story becomes. Brooke would allow that, he enjoys that. Uh, at the end of that, uh, uh, Mimi, the armor bus, too, has become uh, a, an enormous dragon uh, <laughs> that he single-handedly defeated with bare hands. With the bear's hands. With some bear's hands. Yeah, he took the hands off of a bear and then he he, he hit the dragon to death with them. Then in between him explaining it, he will lean towards Grangina and say, 
You shouldn't believe everything he is saying, but a joy is a show. I'm pretty sure you can make out what if this is real and what I, isn't. I'm taking this as like interpretive art. That's a good way of. I'm, I'm just. It. I'm just pretending that he's from Kosia. <laughs> Um, until, uh, late, uh, later into the evening, uh, uh Gr Gringina offers to, to buy you guys rooms, and, uh, um... Uh, where's my die? Fortus kind of notices that, he, he seems to kind of notice that he's being, like, sent away specifically. Uh, but he doesn't really... Uh Talix might suggest that Pip goes with him, so it's not so weird. Yeah, Pip wasn't even here for like the first part of the of the night uh, until eventually he joined up, and notably, uh, he doesn't have any gunshot wounds. Oh, okay. I sorry, I thought he came with us, but sure. <laughs> um. Yeah, he, he joins up eventually, but he wasn't with you from, from the start. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, um both of them can 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 go. And they can hang out a little bit, uh in 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 their own private room. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> um Oh no, that wasn't the toy gun! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and the, the way Grangina looks at Kazimir, she seems to think that he probably won't even remember what we're about to, what you guys are about to talk about. That's um, a butter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then eventually she, she just like, she joins her hands on the table and she looks around and the tavern is so loud uh, that it, it, it's. She seems confident that other people wouldn't really be able to hear what you guys are talking about at this point. Uh, and she leans forward a little bit and says, Okay. So, this is going to, to sound crazy. Um, but I've got a message for you guys from the wolf all right eh. that's very interesting uh, pause uh what the, the 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 wolf yeah like You've... the deity the wolf yep And no one's heard. I would assume that you have some form of proof of this claim that this message is indeed from the wolf. Absolutely not. What is the message? Somehow that is more compelling. Well, you got um. So you, you gotta have a little bit of context, okay? So uh, uh, I was telling the wolf all about the stuff that happened in Simlielon. Uh, just and 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 I know I told you guys that I wouldn't tell the full truth, and I didn't. I didn't mention anything about that Lidarian guy to the Arch Commandant. Okay, nobody in the, here in the colony knows about that. I did skip that, but with the wolf, that's different. He's a god, right? I I, I tell him everything. And it's not like he was gonna get you guys in trouble, or, or you know. Okay, hey, uh, fair enough. And, um... He... He... he, he, he yeah. There are some things that sometimes the wolf wants me to do that I can't do. Because I'm, I'm not just a person who works for the wolf. I, I am a gnome. I am a gnome from Stasil. I... Like my people, I like my country. I like this colony. We we've we've got good stuff going on, and I can't, in good conscience, do things that go against my country. 
What I can do is ask you guys to do that in my place. Uh, and I'm... Don't, don't really like this too much, but the, the wolf thinks that my people are doing something that someone needs to stop. And apparently he thinks that you guys might be good candidates to get that done. Any chance it's the railway? Um... I don't know if the railway ultimately has... Well... It's connected. But the railway isn't the issue. The railway is, is a consequence of it. Ah, uh, you were asking about the train earlier. She 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 looks at Pontifex. Uh, yes, I, I have a bit of an infatuation with it. The way that we power the train is the <gasps> same way that we power our weapons. It's this material called unmaking powder that's what makes things go boom <gasps> it is explosions i know it i know it i told all of you that it was powered by explosions and people looked at me like i was some sort of hack like i'm not a 500 year old professor who knows what he's talking keep about keep it down keep it down what it what is... uh, who do they not all know they don't know that we know Oh, but they should. Can you imagine the look on their faces? Now I know the... that the frogman was right. <laughs> uh, the thing, the big thing that uh, um, we have that no one else has is the unmaking powder, the, 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 the way to create it. And... The particular way that we make it here on the Daria involves materials that we get from this continent. And the wolf thinks that we should not be getting those materials. Like it's, uh, he thinks it's bad for the Daria. Wait, is the powder that you get here, make here, different from what you use on Plorna? What we figured out on Plurna was very different, very more basic compared to what we have now. What we can make here with what we get on Lidaria is far more powerful. We, c we couldn't make our guns or rifles before we found stuff here. Everything really changed with the discovery of Ladaria, and it really helped my people. So you you get where my um where my issue is, right? Because unmaking powder is what makes us great. It's what makes us safe. It it's what makes us strong. And I, I could never interfere with that process. But well. That's the message from, from the wolf and what, what you would you do with it, I, I don't care. And honestly, I probably don't, want, don't even want to hear about it, because I want as little to do with this as possible. Is there any more that you can tell us? What, it, what is it that you're gathering here? I don't know. I, I don't know how unmaking powder is made. I, I don't know its components. Well, the wolf wants us to find out how it is made and stop them from making it? I guess, yeah, pretty much. When the wolf said it's bad for Ladaria, do you have any idea what he meant by that? <sighs> um... What he said to me is that the place that we get it from is a place that we should not go in. And that seems to be the um, 
that that seems to be what the problem is from the wolf's perspective that we're going somewhere where we shouldn't hmm. now i don't really know what like exactly the wolf knows about this and i did ask him to not tell me too much because it that doesn't make me feel good to know that like i am contributing to to hurting my people so maybe you guys can figure out the rest and leave me out of it? <sighs> I'm not sure if it can be left out of it completely. Oh gods, I knew you would say that. I mean, you do understand that. Or what? would happen to us if we go against the gnomes and they find us and catch us, right? Like, if we're the reason um, they can't make their powder anymore or their guns or fire up this train, you should know best what this means for the gnomes and how they will react. Yes. Yes, I know, but, but, but think, uh, what I'm hoping for is, I I'm thinking of the way you guys handled the situation in, in Simulion, where you knew that if things got out, there could be a conflict between Ladarians and Plurnans, and so you distorted the truth a little bit so that this wouldn't happen, and I'm really hoping that whatever you decide to do is not going to utterly be catastrophic to my people, but find some kind of compromise? That would be lovely. But don't you think that if someone who has good connections in between the gnomes would tell them that what they're doing is bad, had like a better effect on them than hey, but What, me? No, not really. Because, again, I'm not an engineer, I, I don't make things go boom. I wouldn't even be able to, to tell them why it's bad. I just heard it from a god that most people don't even believe exists and certainly does not talk to us lowly mortals. And I... <laughs> honestly, I am kind of shocked that you guys are even just accepting what I'm telling you. Well, we've had a strange series of events occur recently. This seems to be relatively in line with that. Uh... It helps that you're not preaching it to us. <laughs> the fact that you understand that this is uh, difficult to believe uh, makes it more believable. And if you had said that you had proof that this is from the wolf, I would have been much more skeptical. Oh. Well, uh, thank you. Where do we need to look? Oh, um... Surely you must at least have some idea of where this place is, where they harvest. Honestly, I I genuinely don't. I I know that it is somewhere beyond the peninsula. But I don't know how they get to it. I don't know how they bring the stuff back. And it's definitely this big secret. Mostly because I imagine if we're going somewhere that we're not supposed to, then we are trying to make sure that nobody gets to know about it. I mean, we, we have these these rules where, like, us Plornans are not supposed to build things outside of the peninsula. And I imagine if we have some system in place to extract a material of some kind, whether it comes from, from, from the trees or from beneath the ground, then we probably have built things. Where Have we you shouldn't. ever even seen a supply chain leaving town or know someone who who's involved with it in some way? Any lead? All I can think of is where our first railway actually goes. Um, and uh, it connects uh, Erka to Buthialera to the northwest. Wait, isn't that the place that you said wasn't connected earlier? 
It's not connected to Simlielon. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a Zvarda colony, and it's uh, right on the border where we're, like, you know, not supposed to go past. So I'd imagine that whatever comes here from beyond the peninsula likely goes through there. Could you perhaps tell us who that, uh, who the important looking gentleman was? The salt and pepper hair, too short, fancy, must fancy mustache? The Arch Commandant? Uh, sure. Uh, my yeah, boss? Wait, that, that was the Arch Commandant? Wait, I thought we were. Wait, the Wild Tamer is the Arch Commandant? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that answers he, some questions. He he got a title after he got here. While Tamer, because he's taming the Dario. Well, apparently he's <laughs> minding it. Hmm. Well, uh, he definitely had found uh, a an obstacle in the form of that one machine that wasn't letting us uh, build anything in the jungle, but uh, now that's taken care of. Well, that leads me to believe that to make this powder, it is something in the forest. Ah, maybe. Again, don't know the details. Uh, but yeah, uh, Talix, that's, that, that, that's the Arch Commandant, Algim Empus. He is... Uh, uh, the... Can you write that name down? Oh, yes, absolutely. Hypothetically speaking, if uh, the Arch Commandant or the Gnomes in general were to discover that we know about this powder, uh, uh, what would we expect? We have laws on this kind of stuff, and our laws only apply to our people, but some of them... We, 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 we push them a little bit. Like, for example, nobody can have a firearm if they're not a gnome or a licensed elf in a few rare exceptions. Uh, so, Ooh. like, you know, whenever we see somebody with a firearm who is not one of those two, then we have the right to take it back uh, at any cost. And similarly, uh, well, knowledge is different. Because we can't take it out of someone's head, but we've got this like process, and it, it's 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 magic, and I I know a little bit of magic, but I don't get this stuff. That's that's beyond me. But it's like about uh, stopping people from talking about it. So even if you have that knowledge, you can't talk about it. You can't share it with anyone. You can't write it down. Uh, it's huh. going to stay in your head, and it's never going to come out. And, um, we, if, if somebody were to hear that you guys know something that you shouldn't, generally that's what gnomes would insist that you, uh, submit yourself to. Huh. Is there any way to remove that? No. <laughs> not, not that I know of. So hypothetically speaking, if one was under the effects of this magic that let you not talk or write about a very specific thing, there is not a way to get rid of it. Nah, absolutely not. That's like the whole point. You'll see something fancy about uh, my time studying this arcane magic is that uh, I don't believe you. But, <laughs> well, we do that kind of stuff actually for a lot of things. I've got, I've, I, I had this done to myself and there's like this one thing I can't talk about to anyone. And that's just how it works. Like, if but I try to tell you... you can't talk about the fact that you can't talk about it. That's, that's true. Yeah. You know, now would be a good time if we had Pip. He did a cool little trick of his on a child recently that seemed to remove afflictions of sorts. Uh, well, while this conversation is taking place, Casimir is uh, leaning uh, his head over Brooke's shoulder. He can barely, like, hold it up. And he's, like, poking him with an elbow. And he's saying, yeah, it sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, that <laughs> sounds very familiar, uh, familiar cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Do we deal with any gnomes? <laughs> Is the, are the phantoms run by a gnome? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's a, he's a human. <laughs> That's what the gnomes want you to it's... think. It's a patsy. It's uh, no, no, Bruno. How about that? You know, I, I deal with him all the time. He's definitely yeah, but... taller than me. <laughs> but do we deal with gnomes? Do you know anything do we, about we, that? Do we take we take jobs from gnomes? I, I just want to take the the the, the one who stares down. That's not what I mean, but. Well, I don't what know do what you, you mean, Brooke. That's okay. I just... <laughs> <laughs> we really need to meet this Brunov guy. <laughs> Man, if you really want to like talk to the big guy, I could probably arrange for it. Wait, 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 wait. what do you want to talk to him about? Uh, I would like to talk, ask him the same question I just asked you. If they, for whatever they do, have worked with the gnomes. Okay, well, I, I'm not going to remember this tomorrow, so you just, like, remind me, okay? Sure. Uh, um, related to that, uh, um, if you if you were to poke around and start getting some information, that's probably the kind of resistance you're going to meet. Like even people who may know what you need to know and who may be willing to tell you, they may physically be unable to do so. So if you figure out a way to like get rid of that, that that I guess that would be interesting, and also you could make a lot of money out of that. Like, every gnome alive nowadays has had that done to them. Even children? Uh, yeah, it's like one of the first things we do when, when a baby is born. What could you possibly need to... to make a... What, well, we what could a baby possibly know? We didn't used to do this, and, and it's not like the baby doesn't know, but like it's going to know, and by the time they learn that information, it's already going to be locked away. And it's it's just, I mean, some of it, you know, like some some of it you you learn later, and it's like we we got this whole thing about the, I'm making powder and like keeping it's the, the process that. that through which it's made a secret, but like in my, in my case, it wasn't even about them making powder, it was just about making babies. Which Wait. I can't, which I couldn't do, so like it didn't even really apply to me. Well, I guess I tried. Yeah, brushing over Sorry, that. sorry, I'm trying, you know, I, I need to wrap my head around this. Did you just say that you're not? Able? What? She didn't. You said that you're not exactly alive. Yes. No, 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 no. But you're saying that you were sealed to not be able to speak on this subject. I I can't talk about um. Bruno. <laughs> 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 did I, did I misunderstand that as a player? <laughs> no, it's just... <laughs> it's a cancel. It's we don't that talk, about talk about Bruno. about how to make babies? Was that what they sealed? Or did I mishear that? <laughs> no, it's it's kind, you kind of got it right. Not only the gnome slink is a secret. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you guys misunderstand. Uh, the amount of people... The amount of gnomes, only Daria, only, is more than the amount of gnomes we had in total at the end of the war, like 50 years ago. 
And the, the way we came back from that was a little bit more elaborate than you might think. I'm getting some strange eugenics vibes off of this. It sounds like it might be sort of the other way around. This is right at the limit of what I can tell you, and I can already feel my tongue like twisting in my mouth. Mm. I'm okay, wait, so the, the saying number saying thing, things. is this relevant to this wolf's request? No, 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 this doesn't have anything to do with it. I was just telling you, that, like, there are things that we, we use magic to keep certain information hidden forever because we believe that the existence of our culture and race is deeply tied to these things. So, the secret uh, of a making powder. We? Do you mean all of the gnomes, or is there... Do you mean the Arch Commandant, who is... Who well, started this? Um... I would say that we all believe in it. Uh, the only... To some extent, oh, you're yeah, putting absolutely. us on it. The, the only way that uh, you, you can roll inside check. The only way that we could survive was by making compromises and making difficult decisions. And I think the greatest majority of us were we're okay with it. Uh, I would have had all the children I could have had in the last 50 years if that was uh, up to me. I, I, I can't, but I would have done it. I would have contributed to our cause. I would have tried to help gnomekind uh, bounce back and prosper. I, I That's why I do everything I do. But um, if you want to know who who came up with the idea first that well that that would be our leader and that's that's not the arch command the arch command is like more like well the arch command is in charge of this whole colony um but he's not the leader of stasil that's dortix that is um Oh. Is there a title? King Dordix? No, no Emperor Dordix? Is there is anything like that? He's the Emperor. Emperor Dordix. Oh. <laughs> I just got it right. It was a 50-50. Dortix. Um, that was... <laughs> what are you guys doing to Pip? <laughs> he just lay... <laughs> was laying there. <laughs> Somebody keeps moving him on the tracks. <laughs> he's... He's in his room with Fortis. And his room train. is on the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get anything for my inside check? You rolled a 13. 13. Um, Grand Gina seems to believe uh, what she's saying. Um, she... Uh, uh, a lot of gnomes, most gnomes that you met so far all left is like deeply ingrained patriotism in them. And Gringina may be uh, a more pleasant uh, person to talk to than most gnomes you've met, but she she shares that trait. She does seem to love her country and her people and to believe that uh, they are doing what it takes for them to survive and prosper. Hmm. <laughs> Go 
And she was magically compelled to feel so from birth, apparently. Arcane eugenics. <laughs> right, so what the... Uh, I don't know how to say this without sounding greedy, but uh, out of curiosity, uh, what is the wolf... If we do this, if we find the source of the problem, uh, and we so decide that it is indeed a problem and needs to be dealt with, and we do, uh, then Well, what? you want me to give you the wolf's war point card? Because he doesn't have one. You have Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cruel joke. I thought it was really funny. It wasn't. What were you well, going we to ask? We have your world point information. Uh, am I going to keep passing messages between you and the wolf? No, I don't. I don't think so. Wait, uh, can you don't? give the wolf my world point card information? I guess I could. I would very much appreciate it. If yeah. You okay. Would. Fine. I'll bring it up to him. Also, uh, if he cares to share anything about the goings on with Vakanoth and. Uh... Well, yeah, this whole business with, uh, well, if it is the deity that it is, then I'm sure it knows uh, what Telex is talking about. Do I know? Out of character. Meta. Does Gringina know about the seed? No. Yep. Gringina does not. You guys bring it up to her? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Dad, uh, what do you want me to ask him if he likes Vakanath? Because he talks fondly of her. All the time, in fact. It's kind of annoying. Does he... Yeah. Does he live there, still? Um, the... Did I ask him this? I don't think he does. I think he said he visits. I do think that we're going around a, an important question here. Uh, how is it that you talk with the wolf in dreams, yes? Mm hmm Yeah, he just shows up in my dreams sometimes, and it's... Uh, sometimes I can hear his voice even while I'm awake. Um, we got this, I don't know, this is this connection. But that's, that's rare. It generally just comes over when I'm sleeping. Okay. Uh, well, you have my world point. Uh, whenever you get the chance, if you can remember to do so, could you perhaps ask this uh, wolf uh, what does he know about ones who cannot dream Ooh, that is a like a really random question but sure uh, it is it has its uh, yeah, just do it do about you mean the ones like, who should be able to else? dream but cannot uh, no no uh, no okay well sure let me just talk to the god of the moon about whatever questions you have about the world. Yeah, I can do Oh, that. no, I have a whole lot more. This one is actually... Okay, important. let me get out some parchment and ink and... Oh, seriously? I would love to do this. Oh, God. I don't guarantee an answer. <laughs> she yeah, will no, start seriously, writing. somebody stop me. Otherwise, I'm going to do this for real. You don't have to, like, roleplay it. You can message me later. <laughs> <laughs> the questions for the wolf uh, you know what i'll just i'll i'll mail them to you <laughs> <laughs> you know you're lucky uh, that he's like a really down-to-earth kind of guy like we you actually... know i don't think he is i think but it's by definition he is uh the moon right but like we we have all sorts of conversations about random stuff so this isn't like as weird as it could be he's like a rather chill dude I don't know these terminologies. It is cold. Wolves have fur. No, no. Anyways. It hey. isn't like I totally have fur, you know that. Uh, he doesn't? No, Wait, like he, what? No, 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 he... He's not a literal wolf. What? 
But in what form do you see him? Well, like a guy. Like a gnome? No, 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 like, well, okay, all right, he looks like an elf, but it's like different from, from other elves. Oh he has like this <laughs> white hair and he just, like his skin is weird. Purple. Yeah, Imagine purple. that this, oh. Oh. Oh, uh... shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you say you, you died, of, oh, you died shit. and that's when you saw him and then you came back? Uh, that, that is what I said. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, uh, that question about the people who can't dream, ask ask that. Like for realsies, okay. or whatever the younger people say. Yeah, alright. And like world pointed to me. Like yeah, okay. tomorrow. tomorrow. I don't decide when I talk with him, like he shows up and then I can talk. Is there some way to insist? No. I, I'm not trying to not be helpful here. That's just a thing I can't do. Right. I, I just I feel like we can't understate this part. I, I need you to like recite the question to yourself <laughs> before you fall asleep so that you don't forget <laughs> it. Okay. Well, uh, the, the good news is that the wolf always seems to like have an idea of what I'm up to. And maybe he knows already, like, what I need to ask. Maybe he's gonna show up tonight and answer it. Yeah, that is terrifying in a way. Yeah. Okay, so we deal with Again, this powder thing. Again, you yeah. guys are just, like, really going along with what I'm saying, which is kind of insane. But appreciated. Yeah, the more answers you give to our questions, the more... Uh... Yes. I didn't think this was going to be the, the majority of our conversation. I thought we would just be talking about like the, the, the whole I'm making powder stuff and. Oh. Uh. No, it is probably about the you are in communication frequently with a, a god that does or does not exist, and yet based on what you are saying, I am convinced that it, it now exists. And as a professor of theology, this is upsetting me. The, uh, don't of, you guys talk to gods too? Out of curiosity, whenever you met him. Did he introduce himself as the wolf first? Uh-huh. Like, first thing you knew, he called himself the wolf? Well, first thing I knew, he said, uh, hi, I am here to, to, uh, to repay an old debt, and I am the wolf. Hmm. Yeah, you never really, like, I, I, you know, I mean, we, we didn't really get to talk much when I was dying. But, like, I asked him about it later, and it sounds like I, apparently, I had some ancestor that, like, he was buddies with. And so, that's why he helped me out. Which, I mean, really lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, very, is that very, why? Very grateful. It was it the wolf who brought you back and that gave you the, um, the magic that you have? Uh, yeah, I didn't have this magic before then. Oh. Oh, you're like a cleric. It's like, it's sort of, yeah, I think so, but... I mean, people don't call what I do divine magic. Even though, If it I is mean, from a deity, then by definition. Yeah, that's what, that's how I hey see guys, it. Hey guys, this is... This is just totally meta at this point. <laughs> when did the fox die again? Not long ago. Like, before or after the start of the campaign? Uh, after, long, I think. No, 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 long, long before the start of the campaign. It was like oh, okay, I thought it was in, very recent. It okay. was in the previous year. Yeah, just, uh... Hmm, okay. The, ca the campaign started in the middle of the third month yep. of the year. So the, uh, the, yeah, okay. I think I know what's going on. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ignore all the dots and just <laughs> keep on keeping on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to convince myself that the wolf is a viable deity and that this is divine magic and that we shouldn't be such a dicks about the wolf. 
and how upset that makes no, I think it is the wolf. up to you. I think it is the wolf as much as anything else is anything else. Anyway. Sure. Hmm, very interesting. Ah. So now what? Uh, Talos has just started just taking notes. And I feel like my brain is about to burst. I also think that this is not a decision we can or should make lightly. Because whatever we decide according to what we know or it know, it will have huge consequences. It just the sheer amount of revisions and errata I have to write for all of my theology books. This is annoying. Uh, that sounds exceptionally boring. Yeah. Thought I left all of this behind me like a half a century ago, but I, it keeps pulling me back in. <clears throat> in fact, I might even give you a copy of my book on the wolf. You can ask him about it. That would be great. Uh, oh, okay, wait, the sure. same one I read? I mean, uh, wait, yeah. I didn't read it. Never mind. Yeah, let's just say I'm not exactly proud of it, but uh, it would help immensely uh, the Plurinan people if the book on the wolf was peer-reviewed by the wolf. <laughs> you, you know that there is, like... Okay, so first of all, I can't give him objects because we don't meet in person. No, but you said he understands and stuff, so if you were to just read the entire book front to back, he would probably know it. I, yes. can't, I can't... Oh, no. Oh, please, don't give me homework. I hate that kind of stuff. I'm a soldier. I like shooting guns. Well, think of each page like a target. But, like, don't shoot it. I, I, I will shoot the book. Okay. This this conversation has gone way off track. Um, I gave you my message and, like, way more information that I had planned to tell you about. Um, you guys enjoy your stay in Urka. And, it, like, if, like, if anyone bothers you, you come get me and I can probably find them. Where do we come get you? Huh? Uh... You wanna know where I live? I mean, I, I suppose I don't know if how we else are. I don't know if, to get you. Yeah, I don't know if we're at this point in a, in our relationship, Pontifex. And that was a silly offer. Okay. But if you ask any guard about my name, that they'll, they'll they'll tell you where I'm hanging out at any particular moment. Huh. Oh, and um, if she she leans forward on the table a little bit. Um, if uh, any guard gives you trouble for like any reason, well, if you're if you're not breaking any law in the first place, okay, um, but like somebody's being like rude to you, uh, you can give them two pieces of gold and in the middle a piece of silver, just the three of them sandwiched like that. And if you if you if you give them those, they'll they'll let you go. You haven't heard it from me. Yeah. Are you sure? Interesting. Okay. Well, I am full. And apparently I have homework. Where do I, where do I find this stupid book of yours? It is... Okay, no, it is fairly stupid. It is a stupid book. Eh... Uh, yeah, You're in, really I'll not selling to it you. to me right now. Uh, yeah, um, I would prefer that it not be sold to anyone, frankly. Uh, I will mail you a copy at my earliest opportunity. Uh, the book revision is, is not of important at the, at the moment. When I go back to Simleilan, I will find a copy and send it to you. But uh, until then, don't worry about it. Just remember the, the those who can't dream thing. That one. Yes, okay, I'll remember that. And like, uh, like, world point me right away. Yep. Oh. 
You guys take care. Don't cause trouble. <clears throat> Are you gonna go home? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I've, I've got... Your, your rooms are taken care of, so like you're good for the night. Do you mind if I walk you home? You know I don't need it, right? I've got, I've got my rifle. Yeah, of course, but just as an appreciation for tonight. Oh, fine. You're like thrice my size. You should. Uh, that, that this should be funny. Let's go. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, Gregina, you should smile more when people ask you where you live. <laughs> okay, old man. <laughs> 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 Brooke and uh, you, you and Gringina are, are, are off on your own. Uh, She's gonna do that tongue twister magic where you can't tell the professor where she lives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brooke's uh, used to it. Uh, was there anything like you wanted to talk about what the, what, yeah. while on the way? I yeah, figured. Where's the residential? Oh, sorry, go on. Um, after they walk a little bit, Brooke will start talking. Friend Gina, c can I ask you something? Well, haven't we done that all evening? It's... Yeah, but it's... It's not really about that. It's about something you told us. And similarly long. Oh shit, what did I say? Did I make fun of you? I... I'm sorry? First of no, all... No, you didn't. Uh, uh, don't uh, punch me, that would kill me. <laughs> I am actually very fragile. Uh, how do I start this? Uh, Alright. What about a simple question? How... How do you... stay so... Or how do you not lose your trust in... Your country after... Basically everything that has happened... Between us and... Between the Moon Watch and the Jade Alliance... And what your country has done and what has been done to your country. Like, you gnomes in general seem pretty patriotic. And... You might have noticed, but... More or less... Well, apparently not the only Furbok, but one of two Furboks here on Lidaria. So... I'm not that fond of... Ilimyar and the fur Furboks in general, so... I'm pretty curious. What kept you believing? Doesn't everyone have a sense of self-preservation? Everything we do is just to survive. With... My... People... Elves... Furbolgs... We've been... Hunted down... We've been... Pushed away and... And killed... For like the entirety of history. And I mean if if we don't stick together, how could we survive? We're I like mean, this really um close family. And even if I don't know the name of that gnome over there across the side of the road, he has been through the same pain that I have been through. Uh, we all have, and we get that. And 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 that person, he, he doesn't know my name, and I don't know, don't know his, but he would risk his life for mine, and I would do the same. No matter what? No matter what the consequences for other races are? I don't think that 
endless vengeance is the way to go. We've been hurt, and a, a lot of us see that as an excuse to hurt back. Um, I try not to do that. And sometimes it's really hard to not just lump a bunch of people, all members of the same race, everyone who is with the Jade Alliance, all in the same category and just label all as evil. But I, I catch myself sometimes thinking that and I, I try not to. And, and I don't really know where the line is drawn. I, I don't think I'm a really good person. I think I'm just trying to survive. I see. Um, I don't think that's the kind of thing I can just answer. I, I might just be like, you know, there will be one moment where I am tested and I have to make a decision and I don't have time to think about it. I don't have time to, to apply logic or emotion. It's just going to be instinct and just whatever kind of person I really am deep down. That would be the moment when that comes out. Yeah, that's fair. I'm sorry if this is a bit personal, but do you mind telling me on um, how you died? Or how my people killed you? If? Or why? It's personal? Huh. Well. Well, I meant if it's too personal. It was a while ago, and I got better. Which is... Something that most people can't really say. You're asking because you're a furbolg. Of course. That's what that bothers you? That there's some people of your kind that could be bad? That could be evil? It bothers me that I fought in the war thinking of the same things you just said. Of self-preservation and working together. And just surviving and not going extinct. And then being betrayed by that same family and apparently betraying that family ourselves. It's. It's. It's a hard pill to swallow. Some people just have their own opinion on things, they don't necessarily all agree. I think us gnomes in that regard are maybe the most, the most, um, uh, the most close people out there. I think we all have roughly the same ideas on what is right and what is wrong and what is worth doing. I think there's a lot more variety in, like, your people and others, humans especially. And, uh... Sure. I, there just was this one furball who was convinced that everything bad that happened to his country was our fault. Because their, your involvement in the war was ultimately our idea. We tried to make that alliance work, and so when war came to your doorstep, this one person thought that it was the fault of the gnomes. He thought the Jade Alliance would have left you alone if it hadn't been for us, and he just he took it out on me. Did all of that happen during the war, or...? It After was the war? during wartime, but it wasn't even on a, on a battlefield. It's not like we were enemies attacking each other. It was just one guy lashing out. It was a very unceremonious death. I thought I would die on the battlefield and not, not like that. Well, you're back alive, right? Right. 
but all because I have one ancestor that apparently a, a god had something to do with. Well, sometimes you're just that lucky, right? Yeah. Maybe my ancestor was a halfling. That's my house, by the way. Oh. Well... I can't speak for that fur bulk. But... I would still like to apologize. You know you don't have to. I know. You fought on our side of the war. You and I were like... We're buddies. Well, it's still my people, right? You said it yourself, they are like family. So it feels like at least it is kind of my fault. Too. Well, I appreciate it. I do. And I'm sorry that my people roped yours into this, this whole thing. Do you gnomes know what happened to us? After the war was over? I was told that um, you... You know, the fact that you're asking me this makes me think that the, ah, there is something going on. But that... I was told that your people acted... Uh, they, they were a very rogue force on the battlefield. And they were kind of helping us out, but also just doing their own thing. And that resulted in multiple diplomatic incidents. And... Uh, I think the Alliance, uh, they had an issue with you, did they not? Afterwards? Hmm. You could say so? Peace talks weren't easy. <sighs> you didn't get like the head of a general or something like that? Yes, I did. Um, can I come in? No, not really. All right. Uh, well? You wouldn't fit through the doorway, first of all. And I, th I think you got the, the wrong idea, Brooke. I'm not interested. In what? You're, you wouldn't fit through the doorway, Brooke. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Look, you're friends with a frog. This can never work. <laughs> That's not what I mean. <laughs> it's a misunderstanding. Uh, Alright. Maybe another day then. <laughs> it's a powerful move. Maybe another Roll a persuasion check. Oh god. <laughs> With your god tier charisma. I don't think this conversation was understood the way I meant it to. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, he actually did okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Grangina unlocks the door and stops in the, in the entranceway and turns back and shrugs, says, All right, maybe, maybe some other day. All right. Uh... Don't tell the blue guy where I live. <laughs> and he stretches out his tongue to show the tattoo. Don't worry about that. I know how to keep secrets. And he turns around and goes back to the inn. Okay. What did the rest of you do while Brooke was gone? If anything. Uh, I can't wait to ask him where she lives when he gets back. 
How does she uh, say? If you need anything, just come and get me. Also, I will not tell you where to come get me. Seems kind of cruel. You said to ask a guard. But I think Talix is just going to kind of consult his notes and kind of get lost in thought and then go to bed. Wait, it is night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Tech and Pontifex? Um. This, uh, I, I guess this is a bit of a, a question. Um, Grangina says that their trains and their weapons and, like, basically their whole society works on this powder. Um, and she was alluding that it's made. Like, she doesn't know the components of it. Mm -hmm. Um, would this be, like, an alchemy thing? I guess I'm, I'm asking you, what would the professor think? Is this, uh, does it sound like alchemy things in this world? The, 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 there are multiple possibilities. It could be a completely chemical process. It, there could be magic involved or it, there may not be. Uh, things are made in all kinds of ways in this world. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only concrete thing you got is that some part of it is made with Ladarian materials. But about the method the, the, or what these materials are, like you just, for now, you don't have information. Oh. Uh, then I think, like once I have some, some time to, to himself to do something, uh, downtime, uh, I'm going to, uh, do we have like our own rooms or is it like a shared room? Uh, everyone has their own separate room. They're okay, then in his own cramped. room, he'll, he'll pull out the, the sequined robe uh, and, like, place it on the ground, and uh, he's going to start some magic-y, ritual -y stuff and start, like, burning materials and try to figure out how this robe works, and I'm going to try to learn a spell off of it. Okay. Uh, did I ever... Tell you, you what the robes would. Okay. I have the spells for that one. Uh, okay, awesome. Is it? How does this work? If you can get multiple spells off of one, you can only is get just, one. And is it just I pick which one? Uh yeah. The, the okay. one you uh, want. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to get borrowed knowledge off of this. Uh, let me just read what I told you after spending vision. Uh, at any point Arcana following check. discovery, yes, yeah, DC is affected by nature of the item, its rarity, and the level of the spell. Mm -hmm. And, and this is the second level spell. Of inscribing a chosen spell. Oh yeah, you can do more than one spell from the same item. Never oh, mind, okay. I did say this. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, it's just a different check for each of them. Okay, then uh, it depends. Uh, you said borrow the knowledge. Yeah, I'm going for that one. And actually, I forget I'm a scribe. This like doesn't take any amount of time. He does I forget not. About... Uh, I forget it's it takes a second me, like, level, so it takes you two minutes. Yeah. Um, do you <laughs> have the materials though? Uh, it's just gold, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like the, the the way I see it, it's not like literally gold. The gold represents the materials that you have to buy, but like you can get them. We it's it's implied you spend that gold to get the materials that you need. Uh, okay, as then, you yeah, need them. Yeah, whatever. So basically, whatever yes. I think I need from this place, they're pretty mm -hmm. industrial here, so they probably have stuff I can use. Uh, and it's what fifty gold per level? Uh, I think so. So this would be a hundred gold. So a hundred gold for bird knowledge, which is a second level. The DC to beat. Uh, it is this, uh, the robes. Um, if I fail the check, do I still lose the gold? You would lose the gold on the, only on a success. Um, okay. Failure is uh, more about a chance of destroying the item in the process. Okay. Cool. Cool. The DC for this one, for your Arcana check, is 15. Uh, 
Uh, can I guidance myself with these checks? Um, since this process... Hmm. Because it takes two minutes. I was going to say, because guidance lasts for one minute, and generally I would let I, I let people use guidance for something that is within that time frame. Uh, so it, if it was a first level spell, I would let you. Okay. But not for a second level. I'll use my inspiration. Why am I loading the... Roll inspiration, the eulogy inspiration. Hmm. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's an 11. Okay, uh, an 11 Damn. is not a substantial enough failure where you'd lose the item. Um, okay. But it is a, a, a loss of time, basically, where you'd have to, it feels like you have to study the object further. Um, okay. in the course of the next few days before you can give it another shot. Yeah, it makes sense that I won't just be doing this every two minutes <laughs> until I get it. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Then he will uh, he will neatly fold up the sequined rope and put it back where it was. And wait for Brooke. Um, uh, Brooke, you're, you're back at the tavern. Mm -hmm. uh, Casimir is uh, sleeping on the table. Uh... uh Tekka is there on his own. Uh, Pontifex went away for a little bit and then came back. Uh, yeah, I'm like waiting down, I guess, in like the lobby of it, waiting for Brooke. Okay. It's the three of you, then. So did she say anything more about the, this whole wolf business? Uh, no, that's not really what we talked about. It's... We talk. I. Hmm. I tried to talk to her about parts of the war, and. You mean the war where, like, their entire peoples were almost genocided? Yeah. Smooth. Thanks. <laughs> I've learned wow, from the when best. Pontifex criticizes you. <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> and she let you walk her home still? Or did she just abandon you halfway? Uh, well, she did let me walk. What do you want from me? <laughs> what do I want from you or from her? From me. Just curious what prompted the walking them home thing is all. Uh... <coughs> Well, she did say that she was killed by a furbot, and I felt bad. Even better. This sounds like it went swimmingly. What are you talking about, Pontifex? Okay, look, uh, young buck, I've been around the <laughs> block a while, okay? Uh, I, I know I'm, I'm a bit of a bookworm, a bit of a uh, nerd, as they're called in some circles. Uh, but I've been around a very long time. I understand the courting thing. The old professor here had his heyday. It wasn't very productive, but it was a heyday of nonetheless. So I can pick up some vibes when I see them. And based on your reaction, I'm guessing that you cannot. Apparently not. <laughs> oh, Jesus, like you have a negative charisma modifier. Listen, I'm not sure what you're trying to interpret in that, but I just wanted to talk about that, and I apologized for her dying, and then I left. Okay, yeah, that's, that's all. But uh, you know where she lives, yes? If you use your magic on me, we're going to have problem. I'm not telling you where she lives. Why would you ever insinuate I was going to use my magic on you? Pontifex is removing his hand from his wand. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Pontifex, your heydays might be over, and she asked me to not tell you where she lives. <sighs> oh, 
okay. A uh, good night, Brooke. <laughs> and good luck with all of uh, all of that. Thanks. I guess he's like walking away, killed by a fur bulky yeesh. <laughs> Just <laughs> <on the police. laughs> <laughs> How old is Brooke, by the way? Isn't he like a hundred or something? Yeah, a little bit below. <laughs> He's 85. <laughs> Look here, you little whippersnapper. <laughs> you don't even know how to tie your own shoes yet. <laughs> you wear boots. <laughs> That's exactly why I wear boots. Not even fancy boots. <laughs> okay, everybody's gonna go to sleep. Okay. Uh, we. <laughs> I I'm just gonna call a little break here. <laughs> While you guys think about how you treat women, <laughs> it's part of my character at this point. But, but holy shit, I think Brooke is learning from the professor. All right, um, I'll see you in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, ten minutes. I'll grab okay. a sec. We return oh. to Erka. Da, da, da. Oh. Um. Oh yeah, you can all take a long rest. Hey. It is. It is happening. You may have it. It's yours. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. I. I am. Just very generous. What do you? Have? Yeah, what's the catch? It's gotta be something <laughs> what's nervous. What's the catch? Why are you being so nice? Well, I mean, I'm just saying, you guys should recover your energy because you're gonna need it. <laughs> Great. For no particular reason. Uh, I guess Talos or Pontifex or both. Uh, I'll, I'll use spell slots or whatever to fill everyone's water stuff. Oh, you well, in a city, you don't have to. When you're in a call, and you can just. There's always going to be a well. Well, I guess in that case, everybody. I'm just going to Dragon's Breath this place to the ground, because ah. it's made by Gnome. You know, the, the next the three weeks where Pontifex is not going to be around, and they're going to be very peaceful. Wait, where's the well? Where's the well? <laughs> it's on yeah. the train, obviously. <laughs> Probably that... Can I, can I look down and see how deep it goes? <laughs> very nice. Roll a persuasion. Uh, what perception check? A persuasion <laughs> check. There's a there, persuade the DM. Me well. but apparently, there's a factory under the ground here. This should give us some information. Yeah. Do they use the common water supply? I mean, I imagine they need water down there too. Yeah. Maybe it would lead into it, or else you'd at least know that it'd have to be further down than that. Okay. Eighteen. Yeah, Talix, you look down into the well, and you cannot see the bottom. Hmm. Is it time for a, a Val adventure? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> I guess we need uh, just ride the bucket down. If our if our quest takes us back to needing to, to get into the factory, we can consider this. But right now, we should probably figure out where they're harvesting this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's dangerous stuff. And also, we need to warn the Atarva that the gnomes are probably going to be trying to go to war with them soon. Oh, lots of stuff going on. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things <laughs> on our checklist. Well, then, what's what's the plan for today? Well, we uh, we spent our one day here in Orca. We said that that's what we'd do, and then we'd go back to Semilon, right? Yep. I don't think there's much else for we, us to do. Uh, Fortis has been very not what? looking too I well. I mean, what? No, no, I'm good. I'm I'm fine. I mean, uh, considering everything that happened in 
past if you're... I mean, you didn't steal another one, did you? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Okay, okay. So, just... Yeah. Well, whatever your reasons. Oh, it's probably best for all of us if we don't spend too much longer here. Mm -hmm. it, where did Grangina say that this, this train that's actively running, where, where does it go to? It's connecting the place that's far west on the border to where? Boo, Fjellira, to work up. Yeah, yeah is me. that the only line currently? Okay, it doesn't go. It doesn't go past Urka. Okay. Uh, it is being built past Urka, but uh, that uh, is not currently finished. Yes. Oop. And uh, I think in where they were doing some construction too, right? So the current, uh, yes, yes, they were. So the current like running line that you know of goes like this, basically. Um, and there is one that is like almost done to seem Lielon that would follow the road. So the only reason that they would build through the jungle just to be to bypass this is to do this, yes. But they really don't need to. So we don't need to feel too bad if we. I don't know, sabotage that later or something. We'll see. The inventor girl yesterday asks to speak with me. After that, we can go to some Vietnam. Speak with uh, Pep or. To me. Oh. I do not know the reason. Okay, yeah. Do you want someone to come with you? Your choice. <laughs> all right. Let's just all go and we'll just hang around in the toy shop. Okay. You all head back to the toy store. The toy store. Pip has way more money to spend on toys now. <laughs> That's true. Um, and it, he did have to come back for the marbles. Uh, so this will probably be the time when he actually like gets that done and uh, we'll figure it out with Austin uh, later. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are poking around and... Uh, uh, as you as you come back in, uh, uh, Bilzu does like gesture at Tekka um, to to say, um, "Mina has been wanting to have a chat with you." So she said yesterday. I'll just Mina calls for her a couple of times until she finally comes out, and she she looks like. She's in her, in her, in her pajamas. Uh, she looks really uh, tired. Um, and she would much rather be sleeping by now, by now but, but her eyes light up a little bit when, when she spots you guys. And then she approaches Tekka. And instead of like coming and, and standing in front of him, she goes directly behind him and she starts tugging at his staff. Can I see this? For what reason? He looks cool. <sighs> that it is. It is something my father made. Be careful with it. Is your father a gnome? No. Oh. Uh, and Tekka will also open... Uh, his, uh, his, his bag. These can attach to the staff. If trees need to be sawn, nails to be hammered, fish to be gathered. Mina will sit down and start just looking it all over. Um, she, she nods a little bit and she says, 
I have a few things like this. You know, I, I have a friend who is like you. How like me? He has a tail and horns. Hmm. I have not seen anyone like him. Do they live here? Yeah. He's... He's my age. Hmm. We, we hang out, um, but... He's a little weird. Can I speak with him? We are leaving today. I don't have long. He's, um... Difficult to talk to. But, um... If, if, if I tell you where he is, can... Can I keep looking at this? <sighs> Do not leave this building. I, I don't like going outside anyway. Then we agree. The entire time she never once lifted her eyes from uh, uh, from your staff and its various attachments, and she started uh, uh, taking out some some tools, uh, and uh, um, it's it's starting to look like she's trying to disassemble uh, the various parts of your staff. Keep it as you first saw it. Understood? Mm hmm I need more. Promise me you will not disassemble my father's creation. Not even if I put it back together? No. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> How oh. are you wow. doing this? <laughs> Every <laughs> session. If there is one thing in life I will never complain about, it's about state rolling net 20s. <laughs> <sighs> ah. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, and anyway, she, Mina definitely looks disappointed with this. And like she starts collecting the attachments together. She almost looks like she's about to hand them back. It, like, like there is no point if she can't disassemble it. But then she, she, uh, stops and she puts them back down and she says I promise good so where does your friend live Kelf is always near the market that's that's where he likes to play he doesn't well. have a home so he just that's where he is. Well, if what you say is true, he should not be hard to find. We will be back shortly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, take a... Uh, we'll start walking out. Towards the market. Where is he going? To the market looking for help, looking for the, for, for the kid that kind of <laughs> looks like him. Are the rest of you going? Uh, this sounds like it might just be a, a tech a personal thing. Talos might just hang around and look at toys. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I you asked. Can, <laughs> like, you can all in. watch over Tekka's staff. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, then Tekka, you 
You take off and you go towards the the market and uh, um, all you have is the knowledge that supposedly there is a kid here <clears throat> who looks like you. Uh, so go ahead and roll an investigation check. Alrighty. I'm gonna use my inspiration. Okay. That's 60? Oh. Or no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks more like a 16 than a 16. If you hover over it, it says 16. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it, oh, my God. This is the, the crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> the maximum character limit. Character limit spiration. <laughs> okay. So 16 total. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, all right. This kid, whose appearance should be uh, pretty... Uh, uh, attention grabbing uh, you figure he is going to easily uh, stick out in the crowd but um, minutes pass and you've circled this place over and over um, and you haven't really seen him until until you do spot him and you realize that the reason why he was so hard to find was that he was actively making an effort to not be seen as uh, the moment when you finally spot uh, a uh, a kid taller than uh, Minna uh, with this uh, reddish colored uh, uh, skin and a long thin tail um, and the horns that that curve multiple times and sort of like go upward in a in a spiral. Um, you, you find him as he's right in the middle of the act of uh, uh, stealing a loaf of bread from one of the stands. And uh, uh, he is making... Um, the way he's going about it uh, uh, is that you see him leaning from one stand and reaching onto the other. Um, and he's like at an angle where most of the crowd wouldn't really see him because he would be hidden behind both of them. Uh, and only because you were like particularly paying attention and there's nobody in that area right now is uh, how you see him just reaching forward with his little hand and he closes his fingers around his bread and he pulls back uh, and immediately just scuttles off. Uh, yeah, Tekka will try to follow, but without being noticed. Uh, you can roll a stealth check. All right. Uh, you follow him as he um, almost vanishes between the market stands as quickly as quick as he is. But you you keep uh, um, you keep pace with him until you see him uh, uh, reaching the very edge of the market and moving behind uh, this one building uh, in the little space between the wall and the house. Um, you're pretty confident that he didn't did notice that he was being followed. Um, so is he, like, is he leaning against the wall? Is he sitting down? Is he taking a bite of the bread? Um, as you, like, go, go around the corner and, uh, and poke your head around, you can see that, uh, he, yeah, he's sitting down, he's eating, he's munching on this bread. Uh, and there's a, a small assortment of, of objects here. There is a, a blanket on the ground. It kind of looks like this is his little, uh, his own little alcove. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think tech uh, takes some... Um, Takes up one of his rations with like some dried crisp bread and uh, kind of just uh, goes into view and says, Clever. Uh, the, the boy jumps to his feet, instinctively moving away uh, from you, um, pulling back until he notices that you're. You don't seem to be here to, to, to punish him. You're just offering him something. And he squints suspiciously at you. Yeah. I am clever. Mind Vi, sit down. Okay. But... You know, I can punch really hard. <laughs> oh, I can think. Uh, he uh, sits back down, but he's like further away from the original spot where he was. Yeah, yeah. Just keeping some distance. T Tekka takes a seat, leaning against uh, the house wall, and just takes a, a bite of the of the crisp bread. I sometimes did, but you did. It was kind of fun getting away with something. I always get away with it. Then you should keep that up. I'm a really good climber. <laughs> Climb trees. Climb the walls. Seems useful over here. Hmm. I can stand on them. Even if they're just vertical. Nobody can follow me when I do that. It was actually um, Mina that told me about you. So that, that we are maybe not so different. Were you a gnome? Do I look like a gnome? Well, I don't look like a gnome, but I am a gnome. You know, people call me many things, but they never really fit. Never really stuck. Do you feel like a gnome? Yeah. They said I can get a gun when I grow up. I'd like to have one. What do you want to do with a gun? Kill bad people. Yeah. I fight bad people with this. And and he was about to grab out his quarter staff and realized it is not there. <laughs> uh, and then he just takes his fists out. Yeah, me too. For now. Do you have any family here? Hmm. She'll come back eventually. See? Mom. Uh, well. How long? Many days. Many, many days. Oh. 
What does she look like? I... We'll be on the road. Can look for her. Um. Her hair is blue. And her eyes are blue. And her hair is really long. Got it. Could be that many like her, right? Right. Listen, I. I'm not gonna bother you, kid. You, you know what? You seem to know what you're doing. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I do. Just for both of us. Know that we're not alone. And he kind of picks up his, his tail. It's okay to be different. I don't want to be different. I want to be a gnome. Do all gnomes look the same? Kinda. Well, a little. They're all small. And there's the ones with the colorful hair. And there's the ones that don't have color. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, my name is Tekka. If we don't meet again, stay safe, okay? Fight bad guys. I'm Kelf. I'll let your mom know, Kelf, if I see her. Um. He goes back to eating his food. Uh. And I think Tekka drops a pouch. As he leaves. Okay. Well, it's back the way he came. Um, yeah, as Tech is leaving, he would hear the, the shuffling behind them of um, the kid approaching to see what, what it is. It is the gold pouch that Pontifex gave him yesterday. Okay. Noted. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, back at the ooh, back at the store. Um, if you guys have been have been um, if your attention has been uh, taken by any kind of mechanical thing, we can. Um, we, we we can still talk about it af after the session, uh, like like Sid did, um, and Teka. By the time you have returned to the store, your staff and its various attachments, uh, um, they're all still exactly where you left them. <laughs> They have barely been moved around. Uh, the rest of the group would have seen Minna um, bring in some tools, and instead of disassembling Tekka's staff and its attachments, she has been uh, building something from scratch. And instead of uh, um, removing anything from, from, from the staff, she has been putting things onto it. Uh, Tekka, your stuff is like slightly longer. There's this, this bulky contraption on one end of it. <gasps> Jetpack. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I am back. He is well. Mina, have you learned anything from my dad's engineering? Mm hmm. I could easily <laughs> make this. It is very useful. I could make it explode, but I didn't take it apart, so I didn't. Thank you. What... What is this? What have you added here? I've put a spring in it. <laughs> a, a spring? Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm done. You can keep it if you want. Of course. You... You are clever, Mina. Mm hmm How should I use this? You just... hit the ground with it. Don't okay. do it inside. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed now. Sorry for waking you. Good luck with future inventions. Mm hmm. Mina is my spirit animal. <laughs> she is who I aspire to become as a mechanical engineer. <laughs> what did you do? It? I put a spring in it. I'm done. I'm going to bed now. <laughs> Don't use me anymore. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> is she a gnome? <laughs> yes. Uh, she, <sighs> she's, she's a gnome. Uh, one of the ones that have like non-colored skin and hair. She looks distinctly, yeah. distinctly different from her father and also her dwarf mom. She gets a pass. Uh, she, <laughs> she's just going to wave at Pip and say, bye. And then she'll like disappear in the back. Then I am done. We can continue our journey. Alright, back to assembly one. We need to make a decision when we're there. Yep. We left Good. someone unresolved. Good that we just made some money. <laughs> Alright. Anyone got anything else to do? I don't think so, no. Uh, not particularly, no. I already uh, may or may not have bought a toy. <laughs> if we're it's going back to Simlelan, then I have a, a book of mine I have to purchase and send to uh, Rangina to read. Okay. Think we're ready to hit the road? I do sort of feel like we just got here, you know? Well, we've been here for a day, right? Uh, uh, Casimir, whatever happened to that meal that you were going to do? Casimir just freezes. <laughs> Figures, you know, get some food before we go out on the road, you know, like a nice meal, a good send-off from Orca, some fine gnomish cuisine. Yeah, weird how some plans just don't work out, huh? Yeah, but they could, you know, like we're not in a rush, I'm a little peckish at the moment, you offered, we have a newfound money. We had breakfast <coughs> an hour ago, oh fine, 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 I did promise it. We can get it to go. Yeah. <laughs> I put it in a little baggie for us. <laughs> Next Better to the than like a roadway ra rations, hungry. you know? Yeah. Next to the rotting fruit. <laughs> yeah, I can put it next to my ooplu. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to digivolve, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can add one 
a set of rations to your inventory. It's freshly made food on the go. <laughs> I refuse to add this as rations. This deserves better. <laughs> Unless this is gnomish food and it's crap. Then it's fair. Gnomes uh... are very utilitarian in general. I imagine their <laughs> cuisine would be what um? How many days travel was it like roughly from from Simlialan to here? I mean, I know we made, we took like some some detours, but like about how long of a journey do you expect it to be? Uh, well, let me let me see. Let me pull out my ten gold map. Um, it should take about uh, eight to to nine days. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm gonna stack up, um, and stock up on some rations then while I'm here. So, along the way, we didn't notice a railroad running, right? Uh, no. I'm sort of under the impression that the railroad might run more directly to Simlilon. What are, is anyone else interested in maybe seeing what we might see if we walk the tracks? Oh, are there tracks? I thought the tracks stopped at Urca. Urca. They well, they they're building some. To the east, yeah. We don't know how. We don't know exactly how far they go. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I asked. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. I asked that earlier. I, I wasn't sure. I mean, I guess I didn't ask about the tracks, but I, I thought that the train stopped here, so I assumed the tracks stopped here too. Yeah, if there's tracks, hell yeah. Yeah, I'd sure. sort of like to see what, you know, what it looks like when they build tracks across the land. Uh, sure, uh, maybe we'll even see them uh, mid-construction and see how they do it. Uh, maybe they'll shoot at us. Uh, maybe, <laughs> that could be exciting. Yeah. And then, you know, we can justify it, they started it. Uh. <laughs> I have a newfound anti-gnome device. Um, oh, right, the one. <laughs> the, the fireball machine. <laughs> but I think that is a good idea and a good start as well. Good sort, Telex. Okay. In either case, I'm going to go stock up on some rations then. I'm, I'm running a little low for an mm -hmm. eight to nine day trip. I don't want to starve to death. Yeah, you can just, if you just want to buy those, they cost half the price that it normally would. Really? Half? Um, yeah. So, 1.5 gold normally, so 1.5 gold for two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can add uh, this attachment uh, for your staff in your inventory. <gasps> 1.5 for two rations, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, three gold for four rations, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so cool! Oh my god. Yes, thank you! Ooh. I am Wait, I... over carrying capacity. Ooh. I think you guys are overpaying. I I have the base price for rations at five silver per per day of rations. Oh, that, oh I that think I saw right, totally... cost for my full for my full stack. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so it's because... it's one one gold is four days rations in this place instead of being two. All right. Okay. Th thanks for catching that. Yeah, but... good catch. So that did seem a little expensive, but whatever. We got money. I'm just throwing it like <laughs> them right now. It is. Yeah, food is super rations. cheap. Yeah, short sure, twelve gold for a for a hard attack. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Five gold jerky. Sell it to me. We bougie now. <laughs> <laughs> We do be rich. Do we? Hmm. Oh, I guess uh, whenever whenever I gave um, the Yavelsi the diamond, did I just give them the staff, or did I take the diamond out of the staff? You took, uh, you removed the, the diamond. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> Me 
man, this is my my seven strength catching up to me now. I don't know what to do. If you need to put something on Duchess, you can. Within uh, reason. Uh, sure. Uh, yes. I just I'm carrying a few. Uh, uh, I think he's gonna take off his backpack and just throw it on Duchess that has like several magic items in it and like a blanket and like his whole brewer's supplies which is most of the weight <laughs> okay, are you yeah. sure that you don't want your own horse professor you know kind of maybe a donkey <laughs> yeah I feel like I'm a little large for a donkey but a horse that is not a bad idea alright I'm a little slow I slowed you down enough already In the Pontifex, the cavalry rolls up. It is, uh, it is over for these fools. You would look stunning, no doubt. Yeah, I, I guess they have horses. Do, well, I guess would they have horses? Would the gnomes sell horses that would work for a six foot six Vidalcan in heavy armor? Yes. <laughs> nice. Really? They we have don't. horses. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. How much is a horse? Uh, a draft horse or a riding horse? What's the difference? Uh, a draft, oh, the draft horse are, carries stuff. Yeah, but like not not speedy as much. <clears throat> a oh, I see. It has a much higher carrying capacity. Yeah, that's over. Yeah, let's get the fast horse. Why not? Let's get the riding horse. If the they riding have it. horse. Okay. Yeah. If you're in Urka, riding horse will cost you a hundred gold pieces. Sure, sure, sure. Why not? Yeah, a oh. riding horse. Wait, I think they were much more reasonable in Simlilon. Yeah, but then I have to make my way to Simlilon. Okay. Well, how much was it in Simlilon? Probably 75. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, nine well, day journey. Discount. That's worth 25 gold. I just said we bougie. Okay. Let me bouge out. Even though, like, I'm probably going to be the gold sink because of copying spells, but whatever. Yeah, I'll get a riding horse. That'll be nice. The gold sink. That's a, There's a lot of, like, presumptions loaded in that phrase. I mean, I'm but, probably going to be the broke guy because all my money is being burned on learning spells. <laughs> instead of, like, using it for every anything else. Yeah, yeah. Give me all of your money. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll add a riding horse. Cool. All right. I had to come up with an equally obnoxious name for the horse. <laughs> Equal to but who? In, Did you just... in the meantime, he's going to load it up. Did you just say that Duchess's name is obnoxious? No, no I mean like a, a Pontifex style name. <gasps> For the cat, for the chess. What, what cat? What cat? Now, my cat already has a name, but now I gotta come up with one for the horse. I, I don't remember ever hearing a name for a cat. When did you get a cat? Uh, it hasn't come up yet. <laughs> oh, okay. The Tressum. I still haven't learned how to actually, that I can just, you know, snap and just call the Tressum to me whenever I want. Pip hasn't explained that yet. <laughs> it's, it's funny that, like, on this session, Austin is not here, and on the next three sessions, you won't be there, so like... Right. That's not funny, that's sad. It, it is sad. It means that the cat is gonna be a mystery for at least another month. Not to me! <laughs> not to you. I mean, you know, I think everyone can look at my character sheet and see the cat's name, oh, but whatever. Don't do that, that guys. spoils the surprise, yeah. I will not... <sighs> Okay, you have a horse. Um, do you have any preference on like, like, do you just grab the first horse you see that like is big enough to carry you, or are you looking for any particular qualities in terms of appearance or or personality? Uh, I think he's going for like, a, what is it called? It's called Roan, I think, where it's like that, like, uh, like the black and gray, like mottled, salt and peppery kind of coat to it. 
I think um, it's called a roan horse. Okay, yeah, I see. I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah. One of the like a like a smoky looking thing. Here we go. Aww. A roan horse. Here. Cute horses. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, yeah, it looks like this. That's my horse. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'll even show off the extra money if I have to. I'm gonna get like a big, uh, what are they called? Like the big blankets that go on horses, like the, the drapery that makes them look fancy. Horse blankets. <laughs> I don't know the term. Yeah, I don't know the term either. Or a horse blanket. But I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm gonna get a big blue one. Okay. Uh, just add, is... like, the cost of uh, Wait, it actually is called a horse blanket. Aw. You're welcome. Wait, like, the fancy thing? I mean... No, I don't mean, like, the thing that you wrap them up to, like, keep them warm in a stable. I mean, like... Yeah, maybe that's... Like a jousting horse. Like, they're, they're wearing, like, their dress, you know? Like yeah, thing it's called a horse an blanket. I don't know if it has a different... Uh... At least that's what Otherwise, I Otherwise, a rug. Um, and then isn't there, like... Like a... Like a, a, a barding or something? Mm-hmm. There's barding. Yeah. There's a saddle. You probably want a saddle at the very least. Yeah, I'm, I'm balling out on this horse. This is a member of the party now. <laughs> yes, sure. yes. Keep adding animals. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's get a let's get a barding for sure. All right, all right. Start with a saddle. Okay. You have, like... Uh, a riding saddle would be uh, 15 gold pieces. Okay, okay. A riding saddle. What about an exotic? Oh, that's for like griffins and stuff. If you want to ride an elephant or, <laughs> or a wyvern. Uh, oh, thank you, Sid. Wait, oh, hold on. Is that a French word? Great question. Caparison? There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm after. Maybe not that. A French one. word. That's more fancy. Yeah. <laughs> a comparison. That's what I'm looking for. It just means cape in Latin, apparently. Whatever. Uh, okay, hold on. Caparison. There's riding saddle, and then there's military saddles, which helps remain mounted, which seems to be the point. You can buy a military saddle for 30 gold. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's do it. Oh god. To the horse. Can we subtract money? Okay. Barding is just whatever kind of armor you want, uh, times four co uh, four four times its base cost. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Uh maybe not the uh, I don't know. What's like the cheapest metal? The Diamond horse armor. <laughs> like the <laughs> plate. It's only like six grand. <laughs> But if uh, gold horse armor is better. The cheapest metal one it oh. would be a chain shirt, which is normally fifty gold pieces. So like if we do that times four, it would be two hundred. Oh, oh my god! Okay, uh, you know it's fine. <laughs> Let's not deal with barding just yet. Maybe, maybe one of these days. I'm not. I'm, I'm not that bougie. I'm new rich, not old rich. <laughs> maybe if we pay the DM real life money, we can get horse armor. Mm. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna take uh, a page out of uh, uh, Oblivion's book. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, that I have my horse. I, I, whatever, <laughs> and I have this military saddle. Does this blanket thing cost anything, or is it just part of the horse? Oh, I was gonna go with the with the blanket uh, cost. Uh, oh, like the actual blanket like, item. Yeah, it's five silver. So you have to multiply that by four. Cool. <laughs> oh, a horse blanket. <laughs> I'll pay two gold for a dope one. Say I have a blanket, but no, See, we'll put a, we'll put pay a dope two one. gold for a fancy one. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. A horse blanket. <laughs> cool. All right. Perfect. And then I'm all good. I'm, he's just gonna load some shit onto the horse. All right. And instead of following the road. You guys want to follow the tracks, right? Yep. Mm hmm Okay. Let's hope they go decently far. <laughs> <laughs> that evil love. Hey. Uh -uh. <laughs> um. All right. Um. Where am I? T 
taking you guys. Well, let me bring up the map. Okay. So, early enough in your journey, um, like on the second day would be the moment when the uh, this this railway just this series of wood and metal pieces uh, begins to diverge from the actual road and heading further uh, north compared to it. And the way it's built, you quickly come to realize it seems to be skirting pretty much as close to the jungle as possible um, for for a little while until it starts going straight in the direction of Sibiliaelon. So, like, what do you what do you basically see goes like this, right? Okay. Um, and following the tracks, um, there's just this moment where you like cross the main road, and there's like a few people walking. Wait, I forgot something. Oh. <gasps> Huh? I forgot something. Hold on, hold on. Take, 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 take that all back. The, 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 take, take it back. Take it back. Where? She forgot to mention my horse is actually a dragon. You get a rumor. Oh, the second dice. You, you get a rumor card. Oh, oh we really do. Yes. Ah, uh, so, 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 shuffle this as many times as you want, and then elect one person. <clears throat> Who hasn't drawn a rumor card? Uh, I, I haven't drawn are. one, like, since the beginning. I got the draw one. I haven't drawn one either, but you're gone for a long while, so draw it. Or who do we think was, was... Oh, wait, I don't think, I don't think I should draw it, because I'm gonna be gone for so long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good right, point, actually, it's the opposite logic. Okay, yes, it's you. And it's you, I've been chosen, yeah, like, shuffle who? the deck. All right. Shuffle the rumor. Maybe Dennis picked up. Maybe Brooke picked up a hot rumor on his date. Ah. Uh. On his promenade <laughs> with uh, with Gringina. <laughs> That's all the heads. We'll see. We'll see based on the rumor. Huh. Oh. Okay. The beach. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. <man. laughs> Yeah. Uh, so actually, let me bring back the map I just put away. Um, this is something. Um, the the moment when the uh, as I was just saying, the moment when the railway loops up to the north, uh, and it sort of like it meets the main road. Uh, that would be the only time when there's actually other people uh, that you'd come across. There's nobody else is like, everyone else is sticking to the road, right? Um, so this is a, this is a small chance for, uh, it's a chance for, for small talk. Um, there is some gnomes in this group and Tekka, you're keeping an eye out for any of them having, uh, blue hair, but, uh, uh none of them do. And, uh, um, one person in this group, uh, is a dragonborn. And you haven't seen many of them, um, in only Daria, ever since you left Cleon, um, we kind of spotted like the, some. Um, in between between Simlila and Nurka, he's like the the only one you've seen. Um, and yet, up and me uh, making small talk. He is uh, a um, he's a merchant, uh, and he he brings uh, first first um, clothes for sale. Um, if there's anything in particular you guys might be looking for, you might, like, be, uh, you can just, like, let me know. Uh, and, uh, as you're making just small talk with this, uh, with his Dragonborn, uh, that's when, uh, he mentions, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this story where supposedly, uh, somewhere deep in Ladaris continent, far beyond where, uh, Probably any Plurnan explorer has ever been. Uh, supposedly, there is this hole. It just the way he describes it, and he has heard it secondhand from someone else. Uh, but this this source supposedly is an Azen, um, and uh, the the Dragonborn claims that the the the, the Azen never lied. They they tell you facts 
uh, mm. very objectively. And so according to him, the way the Ezen described it is that this whole, it's like this chasm that just suddenly um, appears in the ground. It's, it's, a, it's a sudden drop. One moment it's just normal landscape and then there is this fissure. And it's, uh, um, for the most part, circular. And supposedly it goes so deep that if you're standing at the top and you look down, uh, even in, in full daylight, uh, with the sun shining directly above you, you cannot see how deep it goes. And what you can see is vegetation that grows like on the sides of it. Uh, but it, it since it's like a straight vertical drop, um, Sunlight actually doesn't reach the, the size of the walls uh, too far too far deep. So you can see some vegetation, but then the further you go in, the more sparse it becomes. And then it's just uh, darkness. And uh, um, supposedly, for anyone brave enough or crazy enough uh, to... And with the proper equipment uh, to climb down at the bottom, the, the story goes that uh, that is the place where everything that is ever misplaced ends up in. So all sorts of strange and mysterious treasures can be found there. Of course, the whole thing is thought to be um, uh, journeying down this, this hole is guaranteed to be extremely dangerous that's quite a story well uh something to put on the list of places to visit maybe <laughs> though i don't know that i'd actually want to try to go down that hole i was about to say you have become very curious I've become curious. I... Wait, no, curious is the wrong word. Uh, tough is also the wrong word. What? Well, it's okay. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Courageous. Uh, well, I'm not really sure what you mean, but thank you anyways. Anyways, I think it'd just be interesting to see, and maybe, uh, maybe see if we could find out who dug it. Okay. That's the rumor card resolved. Very cool. Back to following uh, the railway. Okay. Out here you are um, relying on your own food and on uh, um, the spell casting prowess of, of your uh, of your companions to um, have a fresh source of water. Enough uh, for uh, each of you for every day of the journey. Uh, Fortus is keeping pace with you. Um, he seems to be doing a lot better compared to, to the first time uh, a few days ago when you met him in the jungle. And the, the, the moment you stepped out of Urk, uh, he just visibly uh, relaxed. Uh, uh, some color returned to his face. So, um, Right. And it is during uh, your fourth day of travel, um, roughly in this area, when you feel the vibrations, uh, um, some of you are walking directly on the metal parts of the rails uh, some of you are beside them and you can feel them shaking a little bit 
and the the instinctive reaction is it kind of reminds you of uh, uh, when the train arrived in front of Erica. You could you could feel it from uh, a long distance, but you don't hear the noise of the huge metal machinery uh, coming your way. Rather, you feel this this shaking in the ground, and your second thought is earthquake, and you. Uh, as you're beginning to, um, as you're beginning to, like, prepare for it, um, the earth beneath your feet splits open. Um, I need, uh, uh I need the horses, uh, both of them, to roll a dexterity save. <laughs> oh no, you're doing this um... right away. I'm Literally, like a schism him. opens up in the ground, like the ground pulls apart underneath us. Uh, I'll elaborate in a moment. Oh no! And I'm I'm looking for Duchess's stats. Uh, it's just a flat. Just a flat zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, dexterity. Nailed it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 hey, finally, it it's been yeah, so I'm getting long. used to it. Did it's I just hear so Jason long. through Winsa through Winsa's mic? Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I can give the full surround experience. <laughs> check up your thingy. Check up the net twenty thing. I did. Get I the did. Numbers up. But yeah, okay. it was just okay. that low. Okay. I already did. So in this case, the only person. <laughs> ah, okay, that's interesting. You bought the military saddle, didn't you? I did. Okay, so uh, the the check was going to be for whether we were gonna get uh, like uh, knocked off the horse. So the horse is spooked, but you get to do a check yourself with your own stats, uh, which in this case uh, hmm. is it animal handling. Uh, for, to not fall off the 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 saddle was gonna call for uh, athletics. Actually, I was thinking. Oh shit! Okay. Oh no! But you have okay, it at advantage it because of the saddle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, pray for me. Praying. Speaking of big holes in the ground, another nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as as the tremors increase and then the, the ground feels like it splits open, you can just see dirt spraying uh, upward. Uh, Dutch is ever set on uh, not showing any any fear. Um, she 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 sidesteps this whole thing and moves to the side of gra uh, with with grace. Uh, Talix having uh, not struggling at all uh, to remain on the saddle. Uh, well, it's Pontifex, good. your your horse, uh, definitely spooked by what just happened. Um, they, uh, what what is it? She or he? Do we know at least that much? Uh, it's a he. Okay. Um, it's a he. he. I rears... think it's probably best for everyone <laughs> if it's a he. He rears uh, uh, back and up, uh, and uh, you, you just, you weren't ready for this, and you just knocked immediately on your back. Uh, and as you're laying there, you can see that what, what, something came up and out of the ground. And uh, uh, you see two, three of them um, rising up and towering uh, above you, Pontifex. Um, these, the, the, before you get a, a feel for what you're looking at, you see the glinting of, of metal, uh, as these are, uh, these are machines in the shape of enormous snakes. And we're going to start the next session with, uh, uh this battle. Oh, God. Ooh. Three of them? Uh, yes. Good Amazing. luck, everyone. <laughs> to you, you're the one on your back. To me, I'm a wizard. I'm fine. Probably. Matt is like, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> well, if uh, I guess since I'm not going to be here, uh, I have two two slots for revivify. One of those is relegated <laughs> to my horse. So. <laughs> 
If one of you goes down, that's fine. I got you. If two of you go down, you have to make a decision. <laughs> I think you just made that decision for us. <laughs> it's, it's me. <laughs> if I go down, no one makes any decisions. <laughs>